Pennsylvania, home of the Stanley Cup for the last two years. The catalyst, Mario Lemieux, the world's greatest player. With his offensive genius, he has captured four scoring titles, and the offense built around him in Pittsburgh can best be referred to as the Red Light Express. Scoring machine, Kevin Stevens, 111 points. Rick Tockett, a power forward, 109 points this year. Ron Francis, consistency plus. He is the fourth member of this Pittsburgh team to hit the century mark this season. And Yarmir Yager, a 21-year-old, epitomizing the talents that have the Penguins on the verge of a dynasty. For the past 25 years, Mr. Rogers has called this his neighborhood. He may have to do some sharing with 66 Mario Lemieux. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the Igloo, ESPN's National Hockey Night, the New Jersey Devils, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne, game two of the first round. Pittsburgh won the first one and decisively. Bill Clement joining me here for game two again. The Devils couldn't shut down this juggernaut in game one. Well, I thought they had to do three things in game one, Gary. And really, when you look back at game one, I think the Devils only accomplished one of those thanks to Chris Terreri in goal. He matched the performance of Tom Brasso. The second thing the Devils had to do is their top scorers had to match the second level scoring of the Penguins, Stevens and Tock and Yager. They didn't do that. And the number one most important thing that they did not accomplish in game one, they had to minimize Mario Lemieux because you can't neutralize and minimize him. They didn't come close to doing that. Mario Lemieux had four points in the first game, including two goals. And of course, they had to be important goals. They're the only kinds that he seems to score. Mario Lemieux put him up by a score of two to one. This goal coming is first of the playoffs at 9.33 of the first period. He made it three to one right here at 4.11 of the second period. And not only did he play that kind of offensive game, he was tough physically against Claude Lemieux. Can anybody take him off his game? I don't think so. I think uh, over the years I was pretty successful in, in uh, uh, concentrating hard for 60 minutes and not let uh, uh, the little things bother me. One of the problems when you're facing Mario Lemieux is when you come up against him, sometimes physically he just plays kind of a wet noodle and he'll fold up and go down, he'll dive, and he'll really mislead you because you'll think that he's not very strong. The next time you come up against him, you'll find out just how strong he is. Both Scott Stevens and Claude Lemieux of the Devils today vouched for Mario Lemieux's strength. They said, we got to be at our strongest when we come up against us, against him and assume that he's going to be at his strongest. And he probably will be again tonight. All the great highlights coming up as the Stanley Cup playoffs are underway. Tom Mees will be back with Al Morganti and Jim Schoenfeld to run those for you. Then we'll be back for the face-off in game two and the continuing miracle of number 66. presentation of the Stanley Cup playoffs is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives. Gary Thorne, Bill Clement, there'll be another sellout crowd here in Pittsburgh at the Igloo tonight. We are delighted to have you with us. Game two of the Patrick Division semifinals. Pittsburgh coming away with the impressive win in the first game, dominating in virtually every aspect of the game against the New Jersey Devils. One of the big reasons they dominated is the Devils allowed them to. We have to talk in this series about what the Devils have to do because very simply the Penguins just have to play to their potential. Chris Terreri will make the start again. He started the other night. He is 8-10 and 10 now in the playoffs. And against the Pittsburgh Penguins has not been able to come away with a very good season against them as he ended up with a 1-4 mark during the regular year. And we are underway. The faceoff comes to Scott Niedermeyer. And game two between the Devils and Penguins. And the Devils will definitely want to set a pace early, physically or otherwise here. Show Pittsburgh they are ready to play this game. Yarmir Yager's got it. Yager will bring it up. Loney breaking in through the middle. Ferreri comes out to play it around for Scott Stevens. Rolls up the board. The Devils have dressed 7 d for tonight's game. Tom Chorsky, a forward who dressed the other night, is not playing. Alexei Kasatonov has been put back in the lineup after not dressing for game one. So there are seven defensemen in tonight's game. As Sir Brooks will shorten his bench yet a little more. Dave Tippett sends it in. Tippett, Loney, and Yarmir Yager on this line. In the corner, Yager reaching in, trying to get it. Pushed around to Stevens. The Devils captain, Scott Stevens. 
Steven stumps it up. Both teams ready for a line change. Bobby Holik comes with Zalapuka. Two on two. Larry Murphy with him in front. He just missed the short side. Holik shot through the middle. Driver comes over to get it. Bruce Driver back in. Shot deflected wide as Zalapuka got set up. Devils do a little buzzing. Peter Stasny behind the net. Bounces off the side of the net. Ramsey's got it. Ramsey will send it cross ice. And it's the Pittsburgh Penguins back. Stevens brings it in. Kevin Stevens intended for Lemieux was cutting down the middle. Devils stepped up and took it away. Devils skating early on here, trying to work it up ice in a hurry. Driver has it. Driver looking. Lemieux cutting on the near side. Lemieux couldn't get the stick on it. Lemieux saved by Barrasso. Picked up by Murphy. This is already the most consistent spurt by the Devils in this playoff series. I mean, even better than at any juncture in game one. All right. Well, listen, they did not have this kind of offensive chance. They've been down low with good scoring chances here on their first two shifts. It's almost as if the trauma is now behind them, the trauma of having to face the Penguins. That is something they did not want to have happen. They backed into the playoffs the last Friday night of the season. It appears that this is behind them now. Barrasso, as Matisoff got it into the zone, Joey Mullen on the fire side tipped it away to Francis. Ron Francis through the middle. Francis drops it. Jeff Daniels save made by Terreri. In the net goes Francis and Batisov. You will separate themselves. Well, I mentioned in the open that Chris Terreri equaled Tom Barrasso. That's a big statement considering that Terreri had six get by him and Tom Barrasso only had three goals get by him. But you have to consider the kind of defense that Tom Barrasso has had in front of him. They don't give up two-on-ones and three-on-twos, and Chris Terreri faced a ton of great scoring opportunities. Devils came out quickly. Claude Lemieux from the face-off dot. Tom Barrasso was able to recover and get right over to, to square up against him. And before that chance, Bobby Holik. The Devils have to get production from people like Bobby Holik. They got him to be the production-type center that they were missing. That didn't work out, so he's back on the wing, and at 220 pounds, 6'3", he's got to come off that wing aggressively the way he did on that replay. And Bobby Holik, when he does that, will have scoring opportunities. It's Ron Francis on the face-off for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Devils trying to hold it in at the line. John McLean tied up by Mullen, held in by Francis. Down low, Daniels dropped it off for Mullen, tied up by Kasatonov. Two of the great Soviet defensemen, Alexei Kasatonov and Vyacheslav Fetisov, teamed up again here tonight as they were most of the year. Devils are called there on the offside. Ron Francis has logged more ice time in this game than Mario Lemieux. And unlike game one, Scotty Bowman started with the more defensive-minded unit for the open group to hit the ice for the game. Ronnie Francis took about 20 stitches in his chin, blocking a shot in game one. He really gave himself up for the team, Gary, because he didn't have an angle to block the shot. It went off the stick, hit him in the chin. Later in the game, he took a straight right from Randy McKay and knocked the Band-Aid right off the stitches be that kind of series when you're in Stanley Cup playoff action. Dennis Morrell's our referee tonight. Wayne Bonney and Dan McCord are working the lines with him. Morrell not allowing Pittsburgh to make a late change here. As they tried to, Scotty Bowman trying to get out on the ice. Francis stays up for the faceoff. Peter Stasny won that one. And the Devils control back at their own blue line. Scott Niedermeyer and Scott Stevens. Rookie Niedermeyer, 19 years old, and Stevens, the all-star veteran, teamed up all season as a defensive pairing. Tom Barrasso around the board. Randy McKay held it in. McKay to Tommy Avalon. Avalon is the seventh defenseman who's playing at a forward position right now on this line for the Devils. He did that about three times during the regular season. There he is right there. That's going to be an offside two-line pass. Stopping the clock with no score here and three minutes into the first. Yeah, it's not really a lopsided lineup when we talk about seven defensemen. In game one, Tommy Alvalin was moved up to be a forward in the penalty-killing situations. So it gives Herb Brooks some flexibility. Now, keep in mind, the Devils want to come with a more patient, consistent defensive style in this game. So it makes a lot of sense to play Tommy Alvalin even up front. He is going to play with a more, uh, basically, a defensive slant to what he's doing out there. Herb Brooks saying, we've got to stay out of the penalty box. We can't turn the puck over from the top of one circle to the other end of the ice circles. We've got to keep Mario Lemieux somehow tied up. He gets two points maybe, but we can't give him more than a couple of points. There is no team in the NHL or even close to the Pittsburgh Penguins for making you pay for your turnovers. You pay a very high price and you can't beat him if you turn it over. John McEachern working right here. Niedermeyer just dumped it out of the zone. You'll see the Devils do that a lot, according to Brooks. The Devils told the, uh, Brooks told his players they get the puck up to the center in the red line and they don't have any place to pass it. Just dump the puck into the zone and avoid the turnover. 
They get at center. Niedermeyer drops it back again for Stevens. 16.30 to go in the first. No score. There's the intercept with Lemieux in that long reach. Taken away from him again by Niedermeyer. Jam up on the boards. Jennings going at it with Bobby Holik. Yager gets knocked down. Puck played by Bobby Holik. Coming with Dave Barr. Barr some room with a shot for Asso to save. Rebound taken behind the net. Shell Samuelson. Stevens steps up to hold it in. Scott Stevens to Billy Garrett. His shot partially blocked by Shell Samuelson. Garrett had the chance. Niedermeyer back at center. Devils getting back on side. Point shot. The flex right back through center ice. Jennings has got it. Jennings some room. Garen moves in on him. Jennings looking to drop it. Shot saved. Terrarius Jennings just spun it in on goal. Bobby Holy clears it out of the zone. Boy, the Penguins are answering the call. So far, the Devils have taken it to the Penguins with the big hits, but did Kevin Stevens ever try to leave Bobby Holy in a pile in the corner? Taken by Danico. Dan Danico, their Iron Man. Huck lost Terrari. Another one of those turnovers we were talking about. Terrari having to come up with a save. Another tip it. Tockett tried to get it in. Couldn't. Tockett center. Stevens was cutting, but Danico had ridden him out of the play, and Zelopukin brings it up. Valeri Zelopukin over to Simak. Simak going to the corner with Ramsey. Poked away by Ramsey. Played deeper again by Zelopukin. Again, Ramsey puts it around the boards for Rick Tuckett to tip it. Dave Tippett to the red line and in, trying to hit Stevens on the fly. Comes back into the middle. Tuckett chases to the corner with Lemieux on him. Tippett gets dumped as he tried to cut across ice. Gets up, finds the puck. Tippett centering shot. Saved by Terrari. Great play, Terrari on Tuckett's tip. Dave Tippett couldn't get the backhand shot off. And here comes Pittsburgh, that offensive juggernaut. Well, when it starts, it comes in a hurry. It is the juggernaut without Mario Lemieux. That's his line, but what, Herb Brooks, uh, what, what Scotty Bowman did on the play was keep Mario on the bench to keep him away from Claude Lemieux. That is going to force Herb Brooks to put out possibly Dave Barr's line, but it looks like he's countering with Nichols. So I think Scotty Bowman's going to play a little greater chess match in this one, try to keep Mario away a little, little bit now and again away from Claude Lemieux. The coach is going at it here early on in this one behind the net. No icing. Francis centered. Bounces off a skate to Daniels. Daniels to Francis. He's taken to the boards by Alexei Kasatonov. Kasatonov just jamming away at Ron Francis. Francis, though, got the puck to the far side. The tease off over through the middle intended for Bernie Nichols. This will be an icing call off Samuelson going back on the touch. From the igloo at a full house in Pittsburgh, the Penguins and the Devils no score. No score on this one, but the Devils have equaled the Penguins in scoring chances. You know, Scotty Bowman admitted yesterday that he really expected an advantage in game one. He wasn't going to say that before game one, but he said because of the Friday night loss the Devils suffered to the New York Islanders, he expected an advantage. He said, not in this game. There will be no advantage. Ariel Lemieux out with Ron Francis moving in to take the face off. Francis running it in himself, comes all the way back to the point. Ramsey shot deflected, save made as it was tipped by Mario Lemieux and Terreri. Blocked that with the stick. Lemieux on the far side. Sticks are up on him. The Devils will have somebody on him all night long, no matter what line is out. Matisoff hit by Ove Samuelson as he dumped it in. Peter Taglianetti goes back to get it. Our shots early on are 4-3 in favor of Pittsburgh. 13-48 left in the first. Francis had it to skates. Mullen! Great save again! Chris Terreri, as he did in the first period of game one, robbing some Penguins of scoring chances. That time, Joey Mullen. This is a terrific save, Gary. Joey Mullen instinctively, when he got this bucket, it kind of shoved the board and threw Ronnie Francis. Look, he misses the pass, gets it back in his skates, finally gets it to Joey Mullen to watch what Mullen does. He tries to go high right away. Terreri got it before he could get much height. But it looked like when Joey Mullen was turning around, he wanted to try and get it up high over Chris Terreri, and Terreri was out to face him perfectly. Mullen and Larry Murphy playing the most playoff games for Pittsburgh Penguins in career history. He's not all with Pittsburgh. 114 games now for Mullen and Murphy appearing in tonight's game. Joey Mullen got a great playoff history. 55 goals and 42 assists. 97 career playoff points. You see the numbers he had for this season. Bobby Holik out against Martin Straka. Straka and Holik tie each other up. Puck squirts away. Terreri came out to play it. Terreri will wander a little bit going after the puck and likes to pass it out if he can do it. Willie Garen sends it in wide to Barrasso. Holik tied up Taglianetti. Puck came back to the point off Samuelson. Puck had come outside. That's an offside on the Devils. While they regroup, we're going to check in with Tom. All right, Gary. More trouble for the Bruins at Boston Garden. They're on the power play, but a turnover here, and Wayne Presley picks it off and takes it in and he'll look for the roof. 
And he finds the roof. Up on the roof goes Presley. One zip at 427. Buffalo on top again, Gary. Hey, Tom, right there. They're doing something most people didn't thought. They won the first. They lead the second. You talk about two teams that were going in absolute opposite directions when the playoffs began the other night. The Sabres were terrible down the stretch. Couldn't win a game to save their lives. The Bruins were just about unbeatable. And it's Buffalo putting on the show. Mark Strachan on the faceoff win. No score here in the first period. Alt Samuelson trying to break it up ice for Strachan that time. Terreri back to get it. Strachan getting up as he got knocked down. Puts the hit on in the corner. Puck comes to Yager. 21-year-old Yarmir Yager. Taken away by Anita Meyer. He's 19 years old. Bobby Holik back the other way. Shot on Barrasso. Makes the save. Barrasso another save on Bobby Holik who one-timed it on his own rebound. Straka coming back with it. He's got Lemieux in front of him. Straka tied up along the boards by Billy Garrett. Far side corner, Stevens, Yager, Lemieux back for Yager. Devils, good checking job here. Yager intercepted again by Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer gets it out. Bobby Holik will send it in. We will have a game three from the Meadowlands, New Jersey's home ice on Thursday. ESPN's National Hockey Night coverage Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Back to center, Jennings has it. We're going to have our first penalty of the game. We'll pick it up when we come back. No score with 12.21 left to go. Play. Watch Owen Nolan tying up Montreal's Mike Keene. The loose puck comes to number seven, Curtis LeCision, who lets a rip into the net. Quebec leads it one tip early in the first period. Back to Pittsburgh, Gary and Bill. And here, no score, but Grant Jennings has picked up a roughing call at 7.39, and the power play is going to go to the New Jersey Devils. The Devils had only one power play goal and eight chances in game one on the season. The Devils finished 12th overall in the National Hockey League. Pittsburgh fourth in penalty killing and a dangerous shorthanded unit that was picked up during the regular season. 20 shorthanded goals. You was on the penalty killing unit. Riche brings it in on the power play for the Devils. Back to Nichols. Nichols lost at the center. Lemieux trying to break. Just missed. Bernie Nichols somehow got that puck away from that long reach. He's breaking again. Francis trying to get it up to Lemieux. Della Pukin has to send it the other way. Ferrari in his own end. Tommy Avalon comes back to get it. You know, the incredible thing about the Penguins penalty killing when Mario Lemieux is out there, he'll hang up at center ice when he misses the first one and hope that one of his guys can get it up to him. And you know, they hardly ever get burnt. I don't know why, but they hardly ever get burnt with people out of position. Stefan Riche, one of the veteran players for the New Jersey Devils. Bill was talking about people they need to score. Well, he's a guy they need to score. His 81st career playoff game. They're going to get something in the net. He's one of those who can do it. Now, there's no question about it. When Kurt Muller went to the Montreal Canadiens, the Devils knew that they were giving up some offense, but they thought that they would get back at least as much offense. And based on history, some of Riche's years in Montreal, hopefully get more offense. That hasn't happened. Stefan Riche had 38 goals, 35 assists during the regular season. He was the Devils' leading goal scorer by one over Alexander Simak. But he was third as the on the list of Devils' overall scorers. Devils are on a power play. No score with 11.24 to go here in the first period. Scott Niedermeyer will work one of the points on the power play unit. Peter Stasny, the veteran, as good as anyone passing. Stephen Schott trickled in, centered by Lemieux. There goes the net. Barrasso got run into by Scott Stevens, but he got run into him because of Alt Samuelson and Larry Murphy pushing him in. Yeah, one thing the Devils didn't do in game one, Gary, is really crash the net. I mean, the, the Penguins drove the net better than the Devils did in game one. Tom Barrasso holding the fourth right now. And as we said, these Pittsburgh Penguins and the New Jersey Devils continue the series on Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific from the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Bill and I will be there for game three Thursday night right here at ESPN's National Hockey Night. Well, the big reason Herb Brooks has number four in red, Scott Stevens up front of the power play is to do this, to create havoc in front of Tom Barrasso, to cram and jam and to try to equal a guy like Ulf Samuels in number five was really a strong guy when he digs in. He's got a linebacker mentality doesn't mind hitting it where it hurts. So Scott Stevens is as big and as strong as they come to get in front of Tom Barrasso and try and take away something from him vision-wise. I mean, you can't stop what you can't see, and that's why the Devils have to try and screen Tom Barrasso because in game one, he was able to see just about everything. You don't get a buy when you can see it. At least not too often. Not often enough to beat him. Power play underway, and the Devils are going to lose it right here. 
A tripping call on the faceoff as Dave Tippett got dumped. Peter Stasny arguing about it. Yeah, he's going to go to the penalty box. Stasny is. And the Devils will lose 46 seconds worth of a power play chance. And I'm sorry, it's Claude Lemieux called. Stasny was arguing, but Lemieux was called for tripping. Well, Lemieux is along the boards here on the left. And you can see as Dave Tippett got through Peter Stasny, Claude Le Oh, and there's what it was. He could have called either one of those. Peter Stasny tripped Dave Tippett as he was going by. But watch Claude Lemieux come through with the stick. And as Tippett was falling, he's going to get whacked in the helmet. Bink! Right there. The plot was even closer to the puck on that one. Well, there now it's Peter Stasny. I, I well, thought he called tripping and Lemieux went into the box. Take your pick on that one. Technically, Denny Morrell could have called two penalties there and been very justified in doing it. Claude Lemieux went off. With, that's the first time I bet in Claude's history he has ever left the ice wrongly on a penalty that wasn't called on him. It's the first time he confessed without without having the lights turned up. Right that's right. Face. So the penalty is on Peter Stasny. And it is for tripping. And it means we'll skate four on four here with 11.09 left to go in the first period and no score of game two. Devils win the faceoff and hold it in. Good win on that by Lemieux. Centering pass intended for Stevens to be tipped out of the zone. Pushed up off the boards. Devils Claude Lemieux back to get it. Claude Lemieux, their leading scorer during the season. Lemieux with Richet. Save Barrasso. Rebound. Richet overskated as it was played up by Samuelson. The far side, Yager. Yager with Lemieux. Mario Lemieux, the pass for him. He tips it in on goal through the legs of everybody and covered up by Chris Guerrero. Guy is putting on a great show at 21 years of age. Former Czechoslovakian player. Great size, speed, good hands, and loves the game. And you know, look at his hair. See how long his hair is? I was talking to him about his haircut today, and I said, his hair. I said, when's the last time he had a haircut? three days ago. I said, you're, you're lying. He said, no, it was a lot longer than it is now. Well, Tom Barrasso kicked this rebound out for Mario Lemieux, and he got it up to Yarmir Yager. Watch what happens here. On the right of your screen, see Shell Samuelson, number 28. He came into the picture and then moved back. The Penguins aren't afraid, even their defensive-minded guys, to get up on the play on a four-on-four -four situation to create an overload and to really pressure the Devils' defensemen. We're at the Igloo in Pittsburgh. This is game two of the Patrick Division uh, semifinals. Pittsburgh won the first one. Gary Thorne, Bill Clement. And we are 10.38 left to go here in the first period with no score. We're skating four on four. Pittsburgh's about to have a power play. Two, one, now. A minute 14 on Pittsburgh's first power play chance of the game. No score. They had three power play goals against the Devils in game one. Talk at the shot high and off the glass. Lemieux leaves it for Tockett. Five on four power play for Pittsburgh. Lemieux on the far side. He generally is on this side. Francis centering Tockett. Tockett. Stevens in front. Lemieux goes behind the net. In front for Stevens. Shot. Save. Terrari. Rebound. Batted in the air. Over the net. Tockett. Back to Lemieux. Ariel Lemieux looking. 40 left on the power play. Francis. Lemieux. Lemieux. Shot. Save. Terrari went off the pass. Murphy at the point, 30 left on the power play. Francis, cross ice, We're looking for Lemieux again, blocked by Terreri. That was a pass, trying to get it back to the near side. Oh, Chris Terreri has to help himself with his own stick. Not only make the save, but disrupt the traffic in front of him. You know, the Devils came very close to forcing too much. They were playing into the Penguins' hands and were able to stop the rush and get it out of the zone. But we talked about this in game one. Aggressive penalty killing most of the time does not work against the Penguins. Their skill level is too high. You have to wait and give them the outside stuff. Don't let them pick you apart with passes through the seams in your box. They do not score on their first power play chance as the penalty's over. Shot by Stevens, and it's gloved by Chris Terreri. So each team 0 for 1 on the power play, and Terreri some big saves on the last one, including one against Kevin Stevens. Score, but almost the Penguins on the power play had Kevin Stevens in front of the net. Two places that we call it trenches. One is in the corners, one is in front of the net. And Chris Terreri had Kevin Stevens doing battle with Ken Danico in front of him. If it's not
not Danico, it has to be Stevens. Those are the two best bets for the Devils getting Kevin Stevens off his game and off his speed in front of Terreri. Dave Tippett on the draw, wanted back to Yager. Yager's shot deflected off the skates wide. Taglianetti over to get it. Into the corner, Kasatonov leaves it for Fatisov. Played around near side, John McLean. McLean trying to get it out of the zone. Now Penguins forcing the play in their offensive end here. Devils having trouble getting it out. Stefan Riche. Riche working with Bernie Nichols and John McLean on this line for the Devils. Don Barrasso. Barrasso whips it around himself. Sean McEachern, the rookie, gets it out to Tippett. Tippett to the red line. Hope checked away by Nichols. McEachern got it again. Again, played by Kasatonov. McEachern held it into Yager. Yager centering pass off Samuelson. Just takes the quick wrist shot. He was on the off shooting side, and Terraria had nowhere to go with it, so he hangs on. And we'll hang on while we check in with Tom. All right, Gary, let's go back to Boston Garden. Already 1 0 Buffalo on the power play. The shot by Bill Holder. The perfect tip in by Randy Wood. Two shots on goal, two goals. Buffalo leads it 2 0 midway through the first. Gary? Buffalo's got the great offensive talents on that team, two of the best. And LaFontaine and McGillney, and right now, Boston has to be in a little bit of a shock. They have to be. I mean, if they don't get this game going down 2 nothing back to Buffalo, I don't care how good they are. Hey, every year there's at least one big upset, isn't there, in the first round? Guaranteed that would qualify as a huge upset. Chris Terreri stopping the nine that have come against him in this game. Each team with nine shots on goal with 8.18 left to go here in the first period. Faceoff will be to Terreri's left. Tom Barrasso, of course, making the same number of saves at the other end. Don't forget Pittsburgh trying to set a new National Hockey League record as they go after their 13th consecutive playoff win. They haven't lost in their last 19 games. They finished the regular season 17-0-1. So with a playoff victory, 18-0-1 into tonight's game. Juan Lemieux will have to take the face off, hoping somebody will move in against him. That someone is going to be Joey Mullen. And Mullen wins the draw. Shell Samuelson the shot deflected out deep. Turnaround shot save made by Terreri. Players down on the ice. Fans wanted to call, won't get it. C-Mac brings it up for the devil. C-Mac to Lemieux and a whistle and an offside on the left. Zella Puka. We'll keep you posted, of course, on our Budweiser scoreboard as we go along tonight. Other games being played with the Islanders taking on Washington. Washington won the first one there. Islanders trying to get one to go back home. Quebec's won the first game in that series. Stunning Montreal. Same thing happening, as we said, in Boston. Boy, Joey Mullins really snapped that face off back to Shell Samuelson. Still a versatile guy at age 36. Here he is in the draw, getting it back to Samuels. So Jeff Daniels is the guy that was able to pull his stick away and get a half decent shot away, but not that good. Now Joey Mullen was too old to be a part of the Calgary Flames organization in 1990. He came to Pittsburgh. Since that time, he's had two operations, one to remove a disc that was ruptured and one on a knee that was banged up. And he is still going strong at age 36, had 33 goals this year, last year 42. I don't think there's going to be an end to his career. Great presence, too, on the team. And two-time Lady Bing Trophy winner for the most sportsmanlike conduct of anyone in the National Hockey League. Cleared up off the glass. It goes down the length of the ice. It's going to be an icing call on the Pittsburgh Penguins as Ken Danico goes back to get it. The Devils have done at least one thing positive. They have shut down these Pittsburgh Penguins. And one of the reasons, Danico's defensive work, told you he is the Iron Man. 311 consecutive games for Ken Danico during the regular season in his years with the Devils. Well, Dave Barr is doing a lot of the covering of Mario Lemieux, but when Claude Lemieux can get out there against him, this is one of the matchups that Herb Brooks like as well. So, Claude, Claude Lemieux was saying this morning, him hanging on to Mario. He wanted to make sure he hung on to him. Get to that other story about the two Lemieux when we get a chance. Billy Garrett in the corner. Garrett had it knocked away by Lemieux. Played off the boards. Devils two on one, but Dave Byron had tipped away. Great defensive play by Larry Murphy. That would have been a two on one down low. Ramsey sends it into the corner. Back to get it, Garrett and Driver. Driver got pinched up, puck still against the boards. Clear to the near side, the Devils will start it up by. Bobby Holick sends it up, Ramsey the veteran back to get it. Ramsey waiting. Ramsey will headman it in himself. Devils shutting down Mario Lemieux. Dave Barr all over him on the near side. Lemieux goes behind the net. Billy Garen was there. Stevens, Kevin Stevens can't get it. Garen clears it up, not out, bounces to the middle, and finally poked out of the zone by Bruce Driver. Ramsey set it the other way. Lemieux cutting, let it go to Stevens. Stevens, Kevin Stevens with Driver on him, tried to center. Driver blocked that behind the net. Jennings has it. Grant Jennings dumps it off in the corner, heads to the net. Towing Jennings shot, and a save. Terraria reached out for it. Jennings, the defense. 
defenseman. He's all alone. Getting shot off the side of the net. Ken Danico and Pittsburgh had the Devils running around on that one. Grant Jennings played it right. He recognized their big pocket and moved back into his D spot to back him up. So he's got to stay in deep. Larry Murphy drops it off for Jennings. No score. Devils playing a much better game here in the first period, as Joe said, than they did at any point in game number one. Troy Loney over to get it. Loney trying to send it in. Yager got a piece as it went by. Ferrari holds it up behind the net. Niedermeyer back for Stevens. Stevens' pass up along the boards intended for Riche. They'll wave off any ice. Tom Barrasso back to get it. Barrasso now 39 and 24 in career playoff games. Continuing to post great numbers. And on the far side, Shell Samuelson took Riche down, no call. Nichols moves in. Samuelson tipped it away. Niedermeyer holding it in at the point. Niedermeyer sends it in behind the net. Samuelson again stepped up. John McLean shot blocked by Martin Straka. Samuelson reached in, just pulled it away. Tough physical battle right now on the ice. Troy Loney. Loney up through the middle. Yager. Yager. Good bump check by Stevens on him. That enough to take him off the puck. Riche has Riche the high flip. Devils want to change it up. Marasso watches the ground ball go by. That one at the big hop on it. And that results in an icing call on the Devils. I know what's going on with Tom. And like Carlos say in Quebec City, they've been talking about Patrick Law in the Montreal goal. He lets in some soft ones now and then. Scott Young beats him from the blue line. And Quebec has just added another one. 3 nothing. Nordiques in the first. Gary? Well, that is a series that is going the way I expected it to go because Montreal faltered down the stretch and Quebec was really hot. So they're right on target. Rick Tockett here. The Grant Jennings parked in front of Chris Terrera and he just tried to chip it up over him. And then look, the coverage is really mixed up here because Jennings got over to the board and was able to turn from there. Moves to Terrera and take another slapper on him. Got a good chance. Lemieux well, and Francis meeting up again on the faceoff here. Francis wins that one, but it's taken away by Fatisov. Slava Fatisov got away with a pass. Right through his own goaltender's crease. Bounces off the Stanion on the glass and stays in. Lemieux gets it back out. Delafukin's pass partially blocked. The Ducks into the zone. Lemieux trying to get it. Francis took it away. Ron Francis moving in. Francis centering. Delafukin on the back check. Larry Delafukin just clears it out of the zone. Lemieux. Lemieux drops it off to C-Mac. C-Mac tied up in the corner. Hope checked away by Taglianetti. Here comes Francis. He's got McEachern with him. Francis with McEachern. Scores! Rookie Sean McEachern. one nothing Pittsburgh. Now the one thing the Devils cannot afford, mistakes. They turn the puck over just inside the blue line, and that will kill you every time. Three Devils caught up ice, two on one. Francis and McEachern. McEachern able to get ahead of his check, and Ronnie Francis with a great fake on Kazatonov and also Chris Terreri to get it to McEachern, who had been caught, but not caught enough on the play. McEachern, the sixth leading rookie scorer during the regular season in the National Hockey League, 24-year-old out of Boston University. What a setup. And there, there's no way Zella Putin was going to catch it. Zella Putin can fly, but at the, the qualifying rounds for the fastest skater for the All-Star break, Sean McEachern was number one for the Penguins, so there was nobody on the Devils team that was going to catch it. And they get the one to nothing lead as they grind it out. That is the third career playoff goal for McEachern in his first of this season. Pittsburgh leads it one to nothing. At center, Kevin Stevens. Stevens turning to the near side. Shot and a save and a late whistle here. Offside, I believe, on the Devils. Pens up, one nothing. 9 McEachern from Francis and Taglianetti on the even strength goal on our Budweiser scoreboard, keeping you posted as we roll along tonight. The other playoff games going on, second games and all of these series, as is this one here in Pittsburgh. All game twos of the first round. Another turnover. Centering pass intended for Lemieux was blocked. That was making the mistakes. Herbert said they can't do. Ferrari on that pass just tipped it into the corner. Randy McKay, the pocket closing down from behind. Ramsey picks up the puck and drops it off. Pittsburgh now shooting the Devils 12-9. Back four, Stevens comes all the way to center. Tommy Avalon working a forward. The defenseman, Ken Danico. Ken Danico, Murphy awning, takes the shot. Barrasso, the easy save on that one. The devil close enough, so he just hangs on. You know, if the Devils do decide to dump it in regularly, they have to keep it away from Tom Barrasso. Give him the time, he will look right up the middle if either Yarmir Yager or Mario Lemieux is on the ice, and he can fire it just about as well as Ron Hextall, so he's a good passer, too. Want to remind you,
you during our Dodge Intermission Report. We'll have the Caps Islander highlights and the Adams Division highlights as well. Tom, Jim, and Al all back there with you for that. That's coming up four minutes, eight seconds from now during our first intermission. Pittsburgh Penguins during the regular season when they scored the first goal were 44, 12, and 7. They scored the first goal the other night, and they've got the first goal here. Talked about Tom Barrasso looking for Yarmir Yager and Mario Lemieux. They come back out of the offensive zone on different sides of the ice. Mario comes back on the left side and Yarmir on the right, so he has to look to a different area depending on who's out there, but he usually finds them if they're open. The Penguins do that as a team. Yager was breaking in, and he was offside as Tippett tried to hold it in. 3.52 left in the first here, and we'll check in with Tom. All right, Gary, back we go to Quebec City and more of the Scott Young Show. The drive by Club, a point off the board, and Scott Young controls the bouncing puck and drives it by Patrick Waugh. Good night for Massachusetts kids from BU. Scott Young, two goals, Sean McEachern, one. Gary? Uh, thanks very much. Talking to someone today about Patrick Waugh, coach, goaltending in the back. Patrick Waugh looks and says he is tired, tired, tired. Just didn't get enough time off during the end of the regular season. And he's giving up the kind of goals that a tired goaltender gives up. But I can't believe his skill level can have dropped that much in a six-month period. I can't believe he's admitting that. I know. That's what he's saying. Nichols tied up, taken down, penalty coming up. That'll give the Devils a power play. Not much question about that one. Dave Tippett knew Bernie Nichols was going to wind up and shoot. He had the bad angle on him, so he put the old lasso around him and hauled him down. Yeah, the Penguins got caught a little flat-footed, so Bernie Nichols had a decent scoring chance. And Dave Tippett wasn't left much option here. See the play? Shell Samuelson tried to get it out of the blue line at blue line and failed to get it out, so it was a quick two-on-one on him, and Tippett really had to scramble to try to cover. Didn't really have a good angle on Bernie Nichols. You can see that he was just trying to cut him off, and Nichols made a good move. I mean, sometimes the offensive player will, will absolutely cause the penalty because of a great move, and that time Bernie Nichols deserves some credit because that was a super cutback move. Tippett goes. You see the tripping call on him, and for the New Jersey Devils, another power play opportunity in the game. Now this will be their second chance of the game. The first one, not a complete power play. They lost about 46 seconds on it, and they committed a penalty. Well, their chance to get this game tied now with 3.27 to go here in the first. Peter Stasny drops it off in front. No shot there. Niedermeyer couldn't get it. Francis diving, got it out of the zone. Doesn't matter how many stitches he's got in his chin, he's still going to dive after it, isn't he? That is a great effort right there. By a 100-point scorer playing defense on a shorthanded unit. Well, that's what the Penguins didn't have a few years ago, is enough players that would give themselves up for the team. Now they got a ton of them. A ton. That one goes off the glass. And you know, talking with the Pittsburgh people today, one of the people we haven't mentioned here yet, Bob Johnson, passed away after coming to this team and winning the first of the two Stanley Cups they have put together. It's recognized forever here, but it's a great day for hockey slogan that he originated. They still say, Badger Bob, he set the tone for all things that now happen to us. And don't think for a second that Scotty Bowman, even though he coached for so many years and appeared to be set in his ways, did not learn from Bob Johnson. I think Scotty has taken a, a page out of Bob Johnson's book. He's a little lighter, he's a little easier going. Scotty was always known as a stern disciplinarian, basically a stern guy. But Bob Johnson was the exact opposite. I think Scotty learned from that a little bit. Shot by driver, save made Barrasso. And hangs on. Why nothing, Pittsburgh leading it. While the hockey playoffs are going on, baseball's got their first month underway in the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll be going against one another, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific tomorrow night. Barry Larkin, one of the game's best shortstop. The Reds take on Andy Van Slyke and the Pirates. It will be seen in the Cincinnati market tomorrow night. Right off the faceoff, good scoring chance for the Devils. We'll see Tom Barrasso. He's very conservative in his use of energy. And in that sense, he'll just stand there. I mean, hardly any motion at all because he's so well positioned. And a lot of shots hit Tom, Tom Barrasso. He used to fight the puck. He doesn't anymore. Francis short-handed. Driver tries to stand him up and can't. Francis has it pinned up against the boards. Pittsburgh short-handed here. Edemeyer and Driver are able to dig it out. Devils on a power play, trailing one to nothing. Sean McEachern has the goal here in the first. Muse pass behind Edemeyer. The Devils' power play really flower, uh, flowered at the beginning and floundered at the end. The last quarter of the season, the Devils could do nothing with it. They dropped from the sixth best to 12th. Lemieux, short-handed.
series right there. When you don't think it can get any better, somehow it does. Gary, Mario Lemieux, just like Wayne Gretzky, is able to disappear on the ice. He becomes invisible. Look, both Bruce Driver and Scott Stevens let him get in behind. And watch Driver. He has him. He hacks him. Then he hooks him. And Terreri is in good position. And nothing works for the backhand. The shelf right under the crossbar. 2-0 Penguins. His third goal of these playoffs is 102nd career playoff point. And Mario Lemieux has made it a 2-0 game with a shorthanded goal. Lemieux had six shorthanded goals during the regular season. Adds another one here. And Pittsburgh's up 2-0. Devil still on the power play. Samuelson around. Tommy Avalon holds it in. Devils have 11 seconds left on the advantage. In the corner, John McClain. Shell Samuelson behind the net. Puts it up in the air. Comes to the near side. It'll be brought up. Penalty's over. Joey Mullen. Even strength Pittsburgh, and they got a short-handed goal. Picked up by McClain. McClain trying to get it up. Tippett has it. Tippett sends it right back in. Two to nothing. Pittsburgh leading. You'll see a replay on that goal about a thousand times between now and the end of the Stanley Cup Finals. Don Barrasso going back to get it. Bruce Driver had gotten so much of him, he had virtually stopped Lemieux's forward progress. They hacked him on the left side and hooked his right leg on the right side. Not enough. The whistle as the puck came in, and uh, it's an icing call here. We'll go all the way down the other way. You know, Gary, I classify certain players, as you see this clearing pass by Al Samuelson. Classify players as far as how much, what percentage of them you have to get to stop them. Some players, you only have to get 50%. Some players, 60, 70. I think you got him. I mean, Driver tried to trip him there, I think. He was just too strong from the waist down. His right leg never budged. But Mario Lemieux is at least a 95 to 100% guy. Even if he has one arm loose, he's dangerous. Yeah, it is once in a lifetime. I don't think there's any question about that. Shorthanded goal, 17-41. Al Samuelson and Tom Barrasso on the assists on that. Shorthanded goal to make it 2 to nothing. We're down to the final minute here of this first period. Bruce Driver, Ken Danico. Danico gets it up to the blue line. The Devils have not beaten themselves here in this first period. Pittsburgh's got a 2 to nothing lead because they are better. They're better. But then again, you, you see Bruce Driver and Scott Stevens pinching in and the turnover at the blue line. You know, they, you don't, the, I said that the turnovers kill you. They make you pay a higher price than anybody else. And you don't have to commit to any of them. Yager, here's another one. The end of the period. He almost got a shot off. Devils trying to break Cmac. Cmac in, takes the shot, deflected wide by Larry Murphy, who plays it himself off to Yager. Yager with 19 seconds left to go. Cmac is nursing a bruise in the buttocks, a deep bruise that is affecting his skating. He's the Devils' second leading goal scorer. Yager knocked down by Barr. Barr clearing it up. Bobby Holy got it out. Samuelson comes back to get it. Samuelson will just tip it in, and the Pittsburgh Penguins, at the end of the first period, have a two-to-nothing lead over the Devils, and a standing ovation to take in with it. Big test for the Devils now. Stick with the game plan. They made a couple of mistakes in the first period, but by and large, they played a good first period. Not good enough yet, but don't go away from the game plan. Shots on goal ended up as 13-12 in favor of Pittsburgh. And after one here at the Igloo, it's the Penguins, two and the Devils, nothing. And now our first intermission in Tom Mees. Report of the Stanley Cup playoffs on National Hockey Night. I'm Tom Mees. Let's get to other games and other scores and highlights around the NHL tonight. Four Stanley Cup games in progress. One at the Cap Center land over Maryland. The Capitals leading this series. One game to done over the Islanders. Rick Tabaracci in goal again for the Caps. Makes a nice save here on Derek King. Don Beaupre has yet to see the ice in this series for Washington. Middle of the first period, though, Derek King makes a nice pass to Pierre Turgeon. You can only lock him up so long. He explodes for the only goal of the first period. And Washington uh, trailing one zip after one period. They lead the series one game to none. Pierre Turgeon showing his brilliance there. It was a nice, nice pass, but you can only contain him so long, Jim. Well, he has emerged as the on-ice leader of the Islanders without dispute. It seems more and more as Pierre Turgeon goes so go the New York Islanders. And the Capitals had better start worrying about some offense of their own. They got a couple of goals from Hunter in the last game, Dale Hunter. Now they have to worry maybe Bondra has to come through, Kristich has to come through. They have to get goals from forwards who have proven they can score at least 30 goals during the regular season, take some of the pressure off that defense. It may seem to the casual observer and the expert alike that the Pittsburgh Penguins, as powerful as they are, really don't have much to worry about. After all, they're two-time defending Stanley Cup champs. 
They're odds on to make it three in a row, but head coach Scotty Bowman is paid in part to always worry, worry about the unexpected. Could the Penguins be upset in the first round? He talks about the dangers of the first round of the playoffs. I think the first round in any series is, is a, a potential hazard because of the fact that um, teams feel good about themselves. They've made the playoffs. They haven't been beaten. Uh, they're going into a series. Uh, sometimes it's a young team that really isn't going to stand. Uh, the pressure is not going to bother a young team early. If it's an experienced team, they've had some good and bad experiences. Jim, can you relate to what Scotty Bowman is saying about the dreaded first round of the playoffs? Yeah, I, I think he makes a lot of sense in this. Another reason is that when players go into this, for the short term, players and teams can play over their capabilities. They can rise to the occasion. As the Stanley Cup playoffs wear on, players seek their own level, so the good players in the end are going to rise to the top. But early on, the going can be tough. I can relate. Whoever plays the Penguins in the first round, it's their last round. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, it's very succinct, and you know what? It looks like, like you're right. All right, uh, two, you're going out on the ledge there. Genius. there he is. <laughs> two nothing after one period. That is our score, short and sweet and to the point here on National Hockey Night. The Norris and the Smythe divisions, they got into action over the weekend. St. Louis leads their series with the Blackhawks. One zip, game two of that series tomorrow night at Chicago Stadium. Last night, Detroit cruising over Toronto. Game two of that series tomorrow night at Joe Louis Arena. Of course, in the Smythe division, last night it was Vancouver beating Winnipeg 4-2. The Canucks lead at one zip. On Sunday afternoon, the LA Kings surprised the Calgary Flames. They'll go at it tomorrow night as well at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. We'll be back to take a look at the Adams division playoffs in a moment. Welcome back to the Igloo in Pittsburgh. The New Jersey Devils down a, a game. And down in this game, two goals. And Mario Lemieux is one of the big reasons. Gary Thorne, Bill Clement back here. Delighted to have you with us. Devils played a much better first period than we saw in any of the three of the first game. They did. The style was good for them. The tempo was better for them. But they still have to avoid making mistakes. There were a couple of judgment mistakes that cost them. The first one was a judgment mistake by Alexander Simak on the first goal that, they did, that the Pittsburgh Penguins scored. The Devils were on a rush. Claude Lemieux was coming through the neutral zone and everything looked like it was in good shape at that point. And it was in good shape. Here you see Lemieux passing over to Samak. Once Samak gets it, watch what he does. He stops. Now at the bottom right of the screen, you've got two Penguins. You see number seven, Joey Mullen, covering his guy. Samak had to get into the top of the circle before he stops. He stopped too close to the blue line. Peter Taglianetti, nice little kick up ice to Ronnie Francis. And away they go to the races. No way Zella Pukin was going to catch Sean McEachern. He's the fastest Penguin. Penguins led 1-0. And when you're on the power play against the Penguins, you've got to know Samuelson going back here, he has got a whole bunch of time to turn around and slap it off the boards. If your defenseman, in this case, Bruce Driver, Scott Stevens, you can't get caught up ice. Bruce Driver was the last guy. He should have stayed back to watch Mario. Mario checks him out, takes a shot from the left, a hook from the right, not even close to being enough. Chris Terreri said before game one, you got to guess when Mario comes in. You guessed wrong on that one, Gary. Well, look at the numbers he's putting up for Mario Lemieux. He now has six playoff shorthanded goals. Mark Messier holds the record in a career at 13 and 37 regular season shorthanded goals in his career for Mario Lemieux. The underway second period. Tom Barrasso, good quick save on that one. Dave Barr muscling that one in in a hurry. Bobby Halik couldn't get it. Tockett's got it. Second period here at the Igloo. Pittsburgh leading by a score of two to nothing. Their goals coming from McEachern and Lemieux. 15.09 and 17.41, the time of the goals in the first period. Mario Lemieux has three in the series, but Techran got his first. Lemieux and Dave Byer do battle, tip back into the zone. Penguins in their own end work it up. Larry Murphy, Murphy, looking for the shot himself, gets tied up, sent it in. Pocket, fanned on it, Stevens, Stevens hacked from behind. Scott Stevens, Kevin Stevens right there with the two different uniforms on. Devils into the zone. Holik, his shot saved. Rebound. Holik, Holik, holding it. Couldn't get the shot off. He looked for the penalty from behind. Thought he'd got hauled down. There will be none. Or it doesn't matter how good your defensemen are. You have to have a forward back in there helping out. And Kevin Stevens is in the right place at the right time to help his D-men on that one. Pittsburgh 0 for 1 on the power play. Devils 0 for 2 on the power play in the first period. Ramsey batted it up in the air. Played by Anita Meyer. Anita Meyer got it out. Pittsburgh hasn't cleared the zone yet. They will do that while the Devils go back to get it. Scott Niedermeyer from his own end. Off for Stevens. Scott Stevens. Niedermeyer. C-Mac. 
in the middle. Couldn't get it. Joey Mullen moves it in. Mullen to Francis. Francis the shot. Missed on the short side as Scott Stevens went down to block it. The shot went over it. Samuelson held it in. Jeff Daniels pinned up by Niedermeyer. Francis moving in to help out. Digging for it. They held it long enough. Dennis Morrell blows the whistle. Faceoff will be to the right of Terrell. Well, the Devils may not have looked very good in game one, and they're down 2 nothing here, but a bright part of their future wears number 27 for them. 19 years of age, Scott Niedemeyer could have pursued a career in medicine. For now, it's hockey. Here's Polite's chance. You saw Larry Murphy get beat on the play. As a defenseman, when a player shoots through you, you have to assume the rebound's coming right back to your back and play the man in a one-on-one -on -one situation and it'll keep him from getting around. Larry Murphy went for the puck on that one and let Holy get around him for the good scoring chance. Claude Lemieux has picked up a slashing call at 143 of the second period. This is not what the Devils needed. No. And it was a retaliation. He went out to take Ulf Samuelson out of the point. Ulf, we gave him a cross-check low in the thigh. And Morrell didn't see that one, but he saw the chop by Claude Lemieux. Pittsburgh gets their second power play of the game. Penguins with the second best power play unit during the regular season. 105 power play goals. They have three against the Devils here in this playoff series. Inside, Yager just tipped away by Tommy Avalon. Yager played it up to the point. Shot by Murphy, saved Terreri. That one went through the screen. Terreri held his ground and somehow stayed with that puck. Good play by Terreri on that save. Dave Byer. Byer will dump it in. Devils will change up on the penalty killers. Larry Murphy. With likes the quarterback the power play along the blue line. Jogger tips it in. Terreri comes up to play it. Ken Danico there. Joey Mullen. Mullen will hold it in for the pens. Francis. Francis along the blue line with Larry Murphy in this power play. Devils come out to challenge. Jogger. Jogger couldn't get it. Gasatonov couldn't. Jogger does. Love you. Mario Lemieux, Devils get back in the box. Younger cutting in, shot saved to Rary. Rebound to the point. Francis over to Lemieux. He knew right where he was going to be. Tipped off the boards. Mullen shot right off the side of the net and cleared up by Ken Danico. Pittsburgh putting the heat on here. You see the time remaining on their power play. Both teams change it up. Francis goes back to get it. Kevin Stevens has come out now with Tockett. Larry Murphy stays out. Intended for Tockett, not touched. Icing if the Devils get there first. They do. Ow. Off going into the boards, feet first. You know, the biggest problem, Gary, for the Devils right now, Jim Schoenfeld talked about the Sabres between periods, kind of sitting on the lead in Boston. The Penguins don't do that. They get a 2 nothing lead, they want a 4 nothing lead. So the Devils cannot count on the Penguins to sit back on the power play, Lemieux feeding Yager. You know, if you force Lemieux the way Ken Danico did number three, if he's too far out to Lemieux, they'll pass it into Yager. You see Danico number three, once you get out to that face-off dot, you know that Yager is going to be the dangerous guy down low. Once again, you got to talk about being passive against the Penguins. If you rush Mario Lemieux, he's going to find somebody behind you. He's going to make you look real bad. Mario Lemieux is going to be a daddy here in about two weeks. His future wife, they're going to be married in June, expecting their first child. And all Mario said the other day, it just seems like everything that can possibly happen in my life is going on at the same time. He has politely requested that his fiance deliver on an off day. Yes. And somebody wrote in the paper with the way things are going for him, she probably will. Back to center, picked up by Tommy Avalon. Devil still short-handed. Avalon moving in, top of the circle, drops it for Stevens. 12 seconds left on the Devil's penalty. Devil's trying to hold it in the zone here. Scott Stevens trying to pin it up. Stevens, eight years of Washington, a four-time All-Star. Now with the New Jersey Devils and their captain. Power play is over. Even strength. Tock it in. Tock it's got room. Tock it the move. The shot. can't tell me that Mario Lemieux's greatness doesn't rub off on a lot of people. Rick Tockett came into this league as a tough guy. Watch this finesse move. Took it off the skate. Not even much of a fake, but I have no idea what Slava Fatisov was thinking. He took what looked like hardly any fake at all, Gary. He went for it and allowed Tockett simply to hoop him to the inside. A little chip shot that Chris Terreri didn't handle. And Rick Tockett has given the Penguins a 3-0 lead. But to me, that was that was one-on-one, one-on-one. 
simple man-to-man -man stuff that Patisov misplayed there. Rocket second in the playoffs against the Devils, a 2-0 lead. And a 2-0, uh, two goals, rather, and a 3-0 lead here for Pittsburgh. Chris Carreri falling backwards on that, had the puck bouncing off him and finally in. John McEachern has got a goal, sends it in. Chased down by the Devils, Bruce Driver. Driver up for Rishi. While all this is going on, the Pittsburgh defense holding the Devils. The zip, John McLean, Alf Samuelson turned him back. Near side to Driver. Driver looking, centered shot. Barrasso made a save as it was tipped by Bernie Nichols. And the Devils can't hold it in. Talking about Rick Tockett, Bill, he led... And you were there with Philadelphia doing the games. He led Philadelphia in penalty minutes his first four years in the National Hockey League. Riche! Save Barrasso! How did he get back? Gary, there was a time when the five-hole was a sure thing with Tom Barrasso. One of the big reasons over the last three to four years Tom Barrasso has improved his game, there seems to be no room between his pads. Penalty coming up. It's going to be on Tippett for taking down Stefan Riche. He's now a scorer as well as a bin man. Target from Stevens and Samuelson at 348 to make it 3 0. At the other end, Stefan Riche tried for the five hole there. There's absolutely no room between Tom Barrasso's pads at all. 3-0 lead, 15 minutes to go in the second. And a power play here for the New Jersey Devils as Dave Mr. Tippett Magic picked up the penalty. Power play will continue when we come back. Tom? All right, Gary, at Boston Garden, the Bruins pressing the tack on Grant Fuhr. Cam Neely deflecting in front. Now he gains control, goes to the backhand. Fuhr gets his glove on it. Now does he carry it over the goal line? They had to go to the video judge. The judge said no goal. Great save, Grant Fuhr, Gary. They're scoring and denying in Boston. Guy that does pretty good denying here for the Pittsburgh Penguins picked up the trading deadline, Mike Ramsey. To me, he's still one of the top three shot blockers in the game, and you can put him on my top dozen defensive defensemen in the league, even today, 42 years old. What a pickup. What a pickup. It's the final day of the trading deadline. The Intaglianetti acquired two defensemen. Makes him that much deeper. We've got Jim Pack, who played on Stanley Cup champions regularly, sitting on the bench, a defenseman for them. Devils trying to get on the board. Tommy Avalon. Avalon spinning around. Niedermeyer can't hold it in. Pittsburgh forcing it. Francis, one of the great checkers at a forward position in this game, putting the heat on right here. Tommy Avalon moving up. Avalon with Lemieux and Stasny. Avalon, a defenseman, playing some forward positions. And now back, moves back to a defensive point. Cleared out of the zone. Back to get it, Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer trying to send it up. Stevens. Stevens shot it in. Lemieux tried to tip as he went by. Samuelson took him out of the play. And it remains a 3-0 Pittsburgh lead. McEachern from Francis and Taglianetti in the first. Lemieux from Samuelson and Barrasso in the first. And then the goal here to make it 3-0. Bye, Tuck. We talked about Rick Tockett as a second-level score for the Penguins. Got right around Patisov so easy. You see Chris Terreri had choked up on the stick and was really trying to poke check Rick Tockett. Watch Terreri go for the poke check. I mean, he did all he could because I don't think he expected that. He broke the stick over the crossbar. You can see that it's pretty well bent there. But the second level of scorers, I consider the people behind looking. Rick Tockett, Yarmir Yager, Kevin Stevens. It's up to guys like Say Mack and Lemieux and Riche to give Chris Terreri the kind of support so that he can at least dig in a little bit. Man, you don't beat the Penguins when you allow them six. You're not going to score seven against these guys. That's what they allowed in game one. 28-year-old Chris Carreri started the first game, took the loss. He's 8-10 in his career in the playoffs. Stefan Riche back to get it. Devils are on a power play here, but they have not been able to convert in this game on power play chances. They were worried about that going into the playoffs. That would be a problem, and right now it is. This is their third chance. Back to the point, Bruce Driver. Driver's shot deflected on Barrasso, who made the nice save. Driver gets it back. Driver leaves it to McLean. McLean, Zelopukin, and Nichols up front on the power play. Zelopukin, back to the point, shot by Driver, save Barrasso. Puck bounces, and Barrasso will hang on. Good play, Tom Barrasso, as he got spun around. Tommies! Hi, right, Gary, the closest game of the night. Tap center land over Maryland. Dale Hunter takes the shot. Comes off, Glenn Healy doesn't know where it is. He actually kicks it in his own net as the Caps' Keith Jones is there, but Healy kicked it in the net. It counts, credited to Hunter. He's third of the playoffs, 1-1. Jerry? Well, 
Talk about coming through in the playoffs. How about Hunter? Not known as a prolific scorer. Nothing he does surprises me, though. He's got about half junkyard dogs and the other half hockey players to put it together. And you can do good things in real clutch situations. Tommy Barrasso holding the fort here. He has turned away all 20 of the Devils' shots. The Devils are out shooting Pittsburgh here, 2016. You see the time remaining on the power play for the Devils. 13.28 to go in the period. Nichols won the face off the driver. Late tic tac driver shot. Villapuka tipped up in the air by Bernie Nichols in behind the net. Comes back up to Stefan Riche. Riche working the point. Driver. Ended for Bernie Nichols. Nichols who had a broken foot at the end of the year. It still bothers him. McLean back over to Nichols. Nichols, defenseman driver, cutting shot. Hit the skate of Larry Murphy. And cleared out of the zone as the penalty ends. Murphy's got it. Back to even strength. Devils 0 for 3 in the power play. Murphy trying to send it in. Zelopukin lined him up. Bernie Nichols got it out. Nichols coming with McLean. John McLean the trailer. Mullen with him. Nichols bringing it in. Nichols. Mullen get just enough of him to deny him the chance to pass. Centering pass right through the middle. Stevens the shot. Save for Asso. Bottom of the circle shot by Scott Stevens. Two on one the other way. Mullen's in the middle. Tip it in. Mullen underneath his stick. Two on one break for Pittsburgh. Niedermeyer got it up ice. Zelopukin struck pass. Deflected as it rolls in. Barrasso right back. He's got Lemieux. Mario Lemieux. Yager. Yager the save made. It was little Mario. <laughs> Yager, the opportunity on the breakaway, and Chris Terreri denies again. That's the fourth time in these two games that Chris Terreri has been able to deny a Pittsburgh Penguin on a breakaway, once by Lemieux in game one, and Yager here in this one. Pittsburgh holds it in. Lemieux for Yager. Yager's open. Yager! Centered. Tipped in the air. Terreri just knocked it away. Lemieux goes to the point. Samuelson shot it wide. This is called going for the juggler. Yager, Lemieux, both out there. Yager trying to dig it away. Fans applauding the effort here of the pen. Stevens has it. Scott Stevens was able to get it up and out. Lost to Kevin Stevens. Back to Scott Stevens. Sends it in far side. Holik shot it wide. Rebound back for Yager. Yager up. Mario Lemieux. Pittsburgh back three on three this time. Jennings looking for Stevens cutting. And a net's been dislodged. And a penalty is coming up as Mario Lemieux ended up in the back of it. Dave Barr, number 11 of the Devils, thought he had the big man. He didn't. Well, at least not legally. Well, Dave Barr goes off. The breakaway by Yarmir Yager moments earlier started with Tom Barrasso. We talked about him looking for Mario. He got it up to Mario, the relay to Yager. That's what the Devils can't do, is allow the Penguins to spread the play out. Chris Terrari has seen more than a share of those kind of chances. Dave Barr, the holding at 8.53 in Pittsburgh is back on the power play. Penn's leading it here by a score of three to nothing. And really putting heat on. Larry Murphy cutting in, tipped it away to the corner. Played there by Lemieux. Pittsburgh's third power play chance of the game. In front, Tockett. Everybody had snuck up that time. Good play by Murphy to be able to hold that in as Peter Stasny had a piece. Tockett's got it. Tockett centered for Lemieux cutting in and underneath his stick. Tom Barrasso help it up. Devils trying to change penalty killers. Look out here. Tockett. Kasatonov stands him up. Ken Danico plays it around the net. Mullen. Mullen drops it off. Lemieux. Lemieux to the point. Francis. Francis. Murphy. Tockett's right in front of Terreri, the goaltender. Lemieux. Mullen on the near side. Lemieux would like to thread it right through to him. Now over to Francis. They rotate around Lemieux. The shot off the top of the glass that time. Devils. Now McLean got it out of the zone. Devils going to change it up again. 53 seconds left in this power play chance. Rick Tockett. Tockett controlling. Kutisov got a piece from behind. That freed it up the center. Tockett trying to step it ahead. Will get it himself. Tockett drops it off. Looking. Stevens cutting Lemieux to him. Tip just wide of the net. Kevin Stevens cutting to the net. Lemieux threaded the needle on him. And Carreri got enough to knock it away. 
Devils will just dump and change again. 25 left on the power play chance for Pittsburgh. Ron Francis. Dogger to the middle. Stevens stepped in front of him. Got Stevens is down. The puck spinned up against the boards. With Ten seconds left on the Devils penalty. Budweiser scoreboard. The Islanders at Washington trying to pick up a win in game two. They lost the first. These are all second games, of course, that are going on. Doesn't Montreal know it? <laughs> Looks just like a Bennett, doesn't it? What a show being put on by the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Devils came out and played a strong first period, made a couple of mistakes, and there were two goals up. And then Rick Tockett, able to thread through two Devils defensemen here in this period, and has given them a three to nothing lead. These teams go to New Jersey for game three, Thursday night at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. We'll have it for you, ESPN's National Hockey Night, and our continuing coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern and 4.30 Pacific. Scotty Bowman got into the mind games after game one. He complained in the newspapers about a shot that Scott Niedemeyer gave to Yarmir Yager and about a two-hander that he said Bobby O'Lee played on Rick Tonkin. Herb Brooks' response, and the old pal Scotty's up to it again, playing the mind game, trying to twist everybody's perception of what really happened out there. Herb may have had the best line thus far. Herb Brooks said on Yager when he went down, and Herb Brooks said it was a dive. He got up and was looking for his barber. <laughs> The shot is deflected wide. <laughs> well, it had been three days since he'd had a haircut. <laughs> Taken by Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer drops it. Zelopukin in. Devils changing. Zelopukin waiting for help here. Doesn't find any. Lemieux holds it into Stevens. Stevens drop pass. Nobody there for the Devils. Pittsburgh trying to break two on one almost. Yager was trying to move it away. Amir Yager did not get a glove on that one ends up rolling through the crease touched up and that'll be an icing call we're at the igloo in pittsburgh second game of the stanley cup quarterfinal her brooks said before the game it was the devil's team that ended pittsburgh's unbeaten streak at the end of the season with a tie so they're going for another record tonight 13 consecutive playoff wins tried to tell his players why not do that again motivational too for this game Right now, it's the Penguins leading by a score of 3-0. They go after that record-breaking 13 consecutive playoff win. Dave Tippett, Tippett, centered it. Blocked on Daniels' shot. Daniels had moved in, but Driver was there. Cmac bringing it the other way. Alexander Cmac centered for Lemieux, who was cutting, but Taglianetti blocked the pass. Cmac back, Zalapukin shot, missed it on the short side. Quick wrist shot. Daniels takes the heat off and just clears it out of the zone. Shots are now at 21-19. Devils have the advantage there, but as happened in the first game, there's a big difference between shots and scoring chances. Good scoring chances. Devils tend to take a lot of perimeter shots in that first game. Icing off Samuelson on the touchdown. You know, Herb Brooks brought up a good point about his team. They're not a fast hockey team, so he said, we got to do this with our head in our hands because our legs aren't going to do it for us. ESPN's National Hockey Night, our Visa storyline tonight. Lemieux is third goal of this two-game series and a shorthanded to boot. Sean McEachern getting his first. Rick Tockett's got his second of this playoff series. And the Devils one for 11 on the power play now in this series. Tockett, by the way, has a streak going. He has a 12-game playoff point scoring streak. He finished the regular season with a 14-game point scoring streak. So he's red hot both ends of this regular season and playoffs. There are the shots on goal. Point shot, Ramsey deflected in front. Troy Loney was going through, hit him right in the back. Stefan Richet of the Devils. Richet, collision at center, down goes Ramsey, but he freed the puck up. Trying to break it in for Yager. Yager put his head up in the air and gave it that big, oh, and he's so close, and I was open, too. Behind the net, Ramsey around for Troy Loney. Casts a ton off in front of him. In the middle of Yager. Yarmir Yager. Waiting, looking, Ramsey, shot, deflected. Francis in the corner. Troy Loney blocked it a bit. Tisov can't clear it out. Yager again. Yager, the shot. Terreri, score! Yarmir Yager's shot. Terreri got a piece of it, lost it twice. One has gone over his shoulder in this game. 
Well, you got to feel for Chris Terreri. That's the first goal in this series that could be classified as perhaps a questionable goal. Chris Terreri had it hit him up high, and the momentum of the shot just had enough to continue over him. Super slow-mo look at it from behind. Yager with pretty good wood on it. I have no idea how that continued over him. Maybe this angle will tell us. Or should that have not bounced out? Perhaps because it continued to rise, Gary. You know, it just it, it, it continued its upward movement after it hit Chris Terreri. Pittsburgh leads it four to nothing. Yarmir Yager has his second goal of this series. And Pittsburgh continues to pour it on here. Back to get it, Jennings. Billy Garrett drives him into the glass, but comes to center. Stevens has it. Stevens waiting for the Devils to clear the zone, trying to back it in. Would not hit his man. The left winger was cunning. Pittsburgh back the other way. They just dump into the corner. Stevens back to get it. Samuelson poke checked it away. Stevens did. Bobby Holik's got it. Stevens still on him. Stevens has to back it up. Three, four checkers here. Pittsburgh putting the heat on. Bobby Holik can't get it. Larry Murphy touches it off to the corner. Scott Niedermeyer over to get it. Niedermeyer up and a tip by Bobby Holik played there by Larry Murphy. Devils just cannot get through this Pittsburgh defense. Not only can't they stop them, but they can't get through to get this kind of scoring opportunities they need. All they get is a wide stuff. That's not enough for Tom Barrasso's goal. As you said, Bill, if he could see him, he could stop him. Into the corner, Bobby Holik. Holik tried to center, had it taken away. Flipped out of the zone. Good play by Mario Lemieux. Sent right back in by Driver. Yager's goal coming at 12.39. Francis and Ramsey, the assist. Behind the net, Randy McKay. McKay trying to center. Hit the back of the net to Ramsey. Ramsey up for Lemieux. Could not stop it. Devils will regroup. Pittsburgh changing it up. Tommy Avalon got it ahead. Pass blocked again by Larry Murphy and played by Mullen. Joey Mullen sends it into the corner. 4-0 Pittsburgh leading. 5.48 left to go in the second period. Ramsey right back in. Francis holds his arms up, not wanting to be beheaded by that. Francis digs it out. Ron Francis, what a game he's played here. Not unusual. Taglianetti shot, deflects into the circle. Jeff Daniels over to get it. Daniels plays around the net. Daniels playing in the second game. The rookie getting his playoff opportunity. The other night played his first playoff game ever. Shot deflects out deep. Swinging around Francis to hold it in. Lost it to Driver. Mullen stepped up. Comes to center. Well, you got to love Ronnie Francis' work ethic. How many bad games have you seen him play in the last two and a half years in playoffs? I can't remember one. And he's always a factor in the playoffs. And Francis is, took the shot. Got dropped. Penalty coming up. Delayed call against the Devils. Centered by Mullen. Stasny has it. And there's the whistle. A high sticking call. When we come back, a power play for Pittsburgh. Landover, Maryland. We're going to show you how the Islanders got the lead. Look at Derek King being sent in by Pierre Turgeon on the save by Tabaracci, but the Islanders keep the pressure on. King still with it, still with it. Looks and finds Steve Thomas right in front. Thomas shoots the save, and Thomas slides it over to a wide open Pierre Turgeon. His second goal of the night. Four minutes left to go in the second period, and the Islanders have taken a two to one lead. And with Pittsburgh well in control of the New Jersey Devils, let's switch you live now to the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. For a little bit of bonus coverage, Al Arbor pacing behind the Islander bench. His team leading 2-1, 3.59 left, second period. Dan Hunter's third of the series. And we'd like to welcome those of you joining us on ESPN. It's the New York Islanders 2 and the Washington Capitals 1 with 3.19 to go. Here in the second period, Pierre Turgeon with both Islander goals. His first two of the playoffs. Dale Hunter, his third in two games for the Capitals early in this second period. The Washington Capitals power play upcoming. Then Wahoga to penalty box. Two minutes for tripping. Face off near the Islander blue line. Dale Hunter on the draw along with Brian Mullet. One by the Capitals. Kelly Johansson on the right point. Johansson moves across. Hunter looking for Christian. He scores! Quickly, the importance of winning the face 
face off. Here's the reverse angle. Kelly O'Hanson down to Hunter, and he just shovels it in. I think that went off the defenseman's foot, Malakoff. And I think Hunter's going to get another goal here, and it's going to be a power play. One more look at it. Watch as Hunter's looking for Kristen. That doesn't get to Kristen. Number 32, Dale Hunter, is going to get his second of the game and also fourth of this series. There's the patented play right off the skate of... Wow, one of the Islanders actually had the puck go in off his skate. Credit Hunter, and you heard the announcer, four goals in the playoffs now. For that scoring machine, Dale Hunter. Speaking of scoring machines, Pittsburgh has added another goal. It's 5 nothing for an update on how it got that way. Let's go back to Gary and Bill. Tom, a 5 nothing lead here as they've added to it on a Kevin Stevens power play goal. 5 nothing Pittsburgh with 3.36 to go here in the second period as the Pittsburgh Penguins. Two in the first, three here in the second. Richet, Barrasso again knocking it down. He's... Right now, denying the Devils anything while his teammates are keeping all the shots above the circle. Sure makes it easy for a goaltender. Not only are the shots coming from wide angles and from long distances, Gary, but there aren't any rebounds for anybody to get. And I'm not, I'm not sure that anybody's driving the net with any consistency anyway. Here's the Kevin Stevens power play goal. Ronnie Francis figured in it all the way. Perfect deflection to an unguarded... Kevin Stevens standing dead center of the slot. Rick Tocco was to the left of Chris Terreri, and Kevin Stevens will take a lot of those. He didn't have to pay a price on that one. This was an easy deflection. Ron Francis, Larry Murphy, the assist at 15.43. Herb Brooks appears ready to leave Chris Terreri in to see what happens in this one. 3.26 to go in the period. And Chris Terreri has played a decent hockey game. He would have had to be superhuman, though, to keep the Penguins completely off the board. He has faced breakaways from Lemieux, and he scored. He stopped the breakaway from Yarmer Yager. How many breakaways have the Devils had, Gary? How many two-on-ones? Oh, many yeah. Two -on -twos? None. Virtually none. Here comes McEachern. Two-on-two. McEachern. He cuts to the net. McEachern tips. Scores! What a play by Sean McEachern! Veteran started this play, 36-year-old Joey Mullen, but it was a couple of kids that finished her off. Rookies, Sean McEachern, with a pass on the left side to Jeff Daniels, and Daniels threaded it back to Sean McEachern, a one-handed stab, and he got enough of it to somehow elevate it over Chris Terreri. Scotty Bowman now is in a really a luxurious position, Gary, because he can put all of his rookies out there at the same time. Remember in game one early, he worked them in slowly with veterans on the line. Six nothing. These guys, Daniel McEachern, Martin Straka, are going to be veterans by the time the series is over because of the big leads they've had. He can play them all the time. No, that's a great point, and it happened during the regular season, too. He was able to do the same thing. Daniels, Joey Mullen cutting this time, but Daniels couldn't find it. Sends it in behind the net. Pittsburgh leading six to nothing. Centered for Mullen, a penalty coming up, holding behind the net. Tom. All right, Gary, Montreal up against it in Quebec, trailing three zip, but putting some pressure. Now, Brian Bellows comes in around Hextall. He makes the save, the rebound. Bellows cruising in, tries to get control. Watch the little black dot. That's the puck as it crossed the goal line. Hextall has his stick extended along the goal line. They went to the goal judge. They ruled no goal. Still 3-0, Quebec. Gary? <laughs> Not much going their way, is there? Is that the truth? Well, Sean McEachern is the guy that has picked up the holding penalty. The stick hold, and you can see it right there on Valeri Zilapukin. Most of the stick holding disappeared from the game this season. Thanks to all the calls that the referees laid on the players in spring, spring training. Listen to me, you can tell seasons have changed in training camp. And it's pretty well died down, but once in a while a player will hold, and luckily Dennis Morrell spotted that one. So, McEachern goes. He'll be called on the holding the stick at 17-26. The Devils will get the power play chance. McEachern has two goals in this game. Mario Lemieux one, Rick Cockett, Yarmir Yager, and Kevin Stevens as they spread it out here. Multiple scorers in this game. Stevens has picked up uh, the goal. Ron Francis, three assists, two goals uh, for Sean McEachern. 
That's going to be called on the icing. The Devils right now can do nothing right. Faceoff comes all the way back to the other end. Well, this plays right into all Samuelson's hands now. The Devils have to come to them. He can play a nice conservative defensive style. And, you know, we talked about Claude Lemieux and Mario Lemieux. Claude still has to come down off his side. And you can say what you want about all Samuelson. He's a tough guy. He's a good positional player. If you're in a vulnerable position, and if Claude Lemieux comes down and is in a vulnerable position and can get hurt by a Samuelson hit, all Samuelson's attitude is, that's your problem, Claude. He's got a linebacker's mentality. That's why ex-Pittsburgh Steeler Jack Lambert names his as a, him as his favorite player, Samuelson, that is. And you know what? If Lambert was a Devils fan, I bet you Claude Lemieux would be his favorite player. Same kind of activities on the ice, aren't they? Mighty tough players to play against. Take a look at Larry Murphy, one of the most understated of the defensemen in the league, 32 years old, overshadowed by so many other stars on this team, and yet Murphy continues to put up great seasons here, finishing with a plus 55 and the third best point production by a defenseman in the National Hockey League. 209 left to go in this period. Devils on the power play here. They've got a minute 30 left on it. In the middle, John McLean taken away by Tippett. Tippett clears it out of the zone. And back to get it is Stefan Riche. Devils not converting on the power play in this series, and that is really costing them right now. Sent in by John McLean. Held up in the corner. And uh, that will get the whistle as the net came loose. A lot of people were pulling for John McLean this season. He missed the entire year last year. Last game in training camp against the New York Islanders. Didn't he go and blow out his right knee? And he rehabbed it all year long. Wasn't able to make it back in the lineup. He wears a brace on that right knee and says he ices it down. Other than that, it's full speed. But John McLean didn't get that 40-goal form back this year that the Devils were hoping that he would get. He had plus 40 goals in each of his two last seasons before going down and missing all of last year. One of the nicest guys that plays this hockey game, and that's why everybody was pulling for him this year to come back. Just a mighty tough comeback for him as he plays in pain. All-time Devils leader in games played, 626 for John McLean. Zalapukin changing a stick up there, delaying the faceoff. John McLean ended up with 24 goals this year. Perhaps that became a factor and was a disappointment because nobody else was able to pick up the slack. Coming back from an injury like that, not only the psychological aspect of it, wondering if you're going to be able to compete. 24 goals, 24 assists, not that bad, but because nobody else really had a huge year for the Devils, a lot of people said John McClain didn't have the kind of year we wanted him to have. I think that was unfair to expect that from somebody coming back from that kind of surgery. I agree. It generally takes a year. You bet. In order to get back a whole year. Played by Tommy Avalon on the far side. Devils on a power play here. 40 seconds left on it, but they haven't been able to do anything with it. Against Pittsburgh, Pens have scored four goals and ten shots in this period. Taken behind the net by Nichols after Zelopukin took the shot. Tommy Avalon's got it. 30 left on the power play. Richet the one-timer over the head of Tom Barrasso. One minute left to go here in the period. John McLean in the middle. Couldn't get it. Richet holding. 20 left on the power play. Tommy Avalon shot. Deflected in the air. Francis trying to clear. Couldn't. We'll get some help. Alf Samuelson brought it out of the zone. 12 seconds left in the power play. John McLean again. Devils changing up here. Stevens just off the bench holds it in. Devils have two seconds, one, and that's it. Even strike. Devils do not convert. Tommy Avalon at the point holds it in. So the Devils continue the over here on the power play and a whistle. The puck was hit with a high stick. 28 seconds left to go here in the second period. ESPN will be televising up to 37 games of the Stanley Cup playoffs, including all of the Stanley Cup finals. Join us on Thursday, Game 3 between Pittsburgh and New Jersey. You'll see it at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. And on Sunday, ABC continues its coverage five consecutive Sundays for the Stanley Cup playoffs. 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 noon Central. Regional coverage. Check your local listings. We will have this Sunday for Bill and myself, game four between the Devils and Pittsburgh. Right now, the Devils have to look to game three to try to create a game five. Game four stands to have a good chance to be the elimination game for the Devils unless they find a key, if there exists a key for the Penguins. There may not be one for the New Jersey Devils. Talent differential is just too great. 
Peter Stasny out to take the face off. The 14th all-time leading scorer, Peter Stasny, in league history. 1,221 points for him. Face off, though, one behind the net for Pittsburgh. Barrasso got it up for Toronto. Steven shot deflected. Bounces in front. Down to 19 seconds left to go here in the period. Chris Terrari behind the net. Be interesting to see whether Terrari starts the third period or whether Craig Billington, the backup goaltender, who shared duties with Terrari, gets his first playoff experience. Bobby Holik tried to run it in, could not. Samuelson had taken it away. Devils back in their own end. Fans of the standing ovation for this team, and they certainly deserve it. What do they ever? You've got to feel for Chris Terrari. He doesn't ask for anybody to feel sorry for him, but I do. He hasn't had much support. Larry Lemieux had a chance to rest, and will have more chance probably in that third period. We've completed two here in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh leading the Devils six to nothing. Back to top. All right, Gary. Thorough domination by the Pittsburgh Penguins. As many expected, what you're witnessing here is uh, hockey's version of an uh, execution. The Devils look like boys against men so far the first two periods at uh, the Igloo in Pittsburgh. Back with more of that game, the third period in just a moment. First of all, another game that's a lot closer at the Cap Center, Orlando Romero, and New York Islanders, Washington Capitals, game two. Let's uh, see what's happening at the Cap Center. The Caps won game one. Islanders jump out early, though. Derek King with a pass to Pierre Turgeon, who gets around Ally Freddy and scores one zip, New York Islanders. But the Caps do come back with their main man of the playoffs. Yes, Dale Hunter with the shot. Glenn Healy actually has it go in off his skate. The score is tied at one. Now watch this sequence. King is denied by Rick Tabaracci, but the Isles keep the pressure on. King still with it. Feeds Steve Thomas in the slot. Thomas ends up with a point blank shot. Tabaracci to save, but the loose puck, and Thomas gets it to Pierre Turgeon. Two to one Islanders. Then the Caps respond to the power play. Dale Hunter with his second goal of the game, fourth in the playoffs, and it is 2-2. They've just reached the end of the second period of the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. Of course, there are, is a lot of, of other action tonight around the National Hockey League Stanley Cup playoffs. We'll be back with highlights and analysis as National Hockey Night rolls on. Our primary telecast, all Pittsburgh. Penguins lead at 6-0 after two. Penguins are leading the Devils 6 I think Gary Thorne, Bill Clement back here with you. Anything left the Devils can do to get back? I don't think they, they can in this game, Gary. Problem against the Pittsburgh Penguins are like all of the dynasties. Montreal from the 70s, the Islanders after them, and the, and the Edmonton Oilers after that. When they get up by two, they don't sit back on it. They want more. They've got killer instinct. All right, our Miller genuine draft scoring summary, and it is all Pittsburgh Penguins. In the first period, it was McEachran's first of the series, Francis and Taglianetti. Then Mario Lemieux's third, Samuelson and Barrasso, short hand. Tockett from Stevens and Samuelson. Tockett second. Yager's second of the series. Francis and Ramsey the assist. Stevens from Francis and Murphy. That's a power play goal. And then Masek McEachran second of the game. Daniels and Mullen at 16.50. Six. Six nothing. And as we had speculated, Herb Brooks has decided to spare Chris Terreri of any further embarrassment and any further goals in this hockey game. Craig Billington is starting the third period for the Devils. This will be Bellington's first appearance in a playoff game of any kind. Stanley Cup action. Devils down here six to nothing. Started even strength here in the third. Bobby Holy has it. Holy sends it in. And Herb Brooks is going to be wondering, who am I going to use? What kind of combinations? He has not had a goal from a first or second line forward in this two-game series. That's why you can't blame Chris Terreri. When Scott Stevens gets two and Dave Barr gets the other one in game one and nobody gets one in game two, the only thing that would help Chris Terreri or Craig Billington at this stage is a couple of quick field goals. Craig Billington, a lot of work during the regular season with the New Jersey Devils as he shared duties. He ended up with a 21-16-4 mark. He went to the All-Star game. And uh, Herb Brooks continued to alternate between the two goaltenders. But I didn't want to have to do it, but there really not much choice here, as Bill said here, in this third period to get him in. I think the one thing, Gary, that, that Herb Brooks wants and that these players at least should try and aspire to and achieve in the third period is playing with pride. I mean, don't let anybody see you quit. It's been a long hockey season. Sure, you're down 6 nothing, but at least try to muster up whatever intensity you can bring to the ice surface, perhaps hit some people, and play with some pride. Believe me, Lou Lamorello, the GM of the 
Devils is sitting up here assessing players as this series goes on. Lemieux shot blocked by Barrasso. Chased into the corner by Lemieux. Claude Lemieux trying to get it behind the net. Banged away by Zelopukin. C-Mac and Lemieux were all there. Shell Samuelson took Lemieux down. Freed up at center. Picked up by Scott Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer will drop it up ice, and we're going to join Tom Eves. All right, Gary, with that game in uh, firm hands of the Pittsburgh Penguins, we're going to switch down to the cap center land over Maryland. Third period just underway. Islanders, Washington Capitals, score tied at two. Caps lead the series one game to none. And we welcome you tuning in once again on ESPN. Kenny Albert along with Craig Lachlan and Al Koch and Islanders on the power play. Thomas Houston wide. Turgeon looking to complete the hat trick. He steered it wide as well. Islanders fourth power play of the game. Turgeon kicked out by Tavaracci. Miller carries to the far corner and clears all the way down. It's a 2-2 hockey game. Washington Capitals and New York Islanders opening minute of play. Third period, game two of the Patrick Division semifinals from the Capital Center. Iafredi sends it up the boards and out. Good play by Al Iafredi. Got enough mustard on that to get it past the fork checkers. Steve Thomas closing off the wall. Here comes Hatcher with a wrist shot. A blocker saved by Healy. The defenseman Norton had fallen down. One minute to go on the Tavarachi penalty. Dale Hunter with a pair of goals for the Capitals. Pierre Prunjohn scored twice for the Islanders. Todd Krieger shoots the puck the length of the ice. This the Islanders' ninth power play of this series, and they have yet to score. Poop up the middle, Benoit Hogue. Hogue across the Capitals line, holds up. Looking for Ferraro, but it eluded him, and Krieger clears once again with 35 seconds left on the Tabarachi penalty being served by Carpenter. He made proof for the Islanders with a minute and a half gone by, third period. Stopped behind the net by Tabarachi, who's made 30 saves tonight. And the puck deflects out of play. The Islanders out shooting the Capitals, correct, 32-16. Islanders putting a lot of heat on the Capitals and goaltender Rick Tavaracci as he fixes his equipment a little bit to start this third period. That puck deflecting off Patrick Flatley into the stands here at the Capitol Center. Therefore, the face-off comes outside the zone since the Capitals are killing off this penalty that Bobby Carpenter was assessed that is serving Rick Tavaracci's penalty. Mike Ridley and Kelly Miller on to try and kill the remaining 21 seconds. They did the job in game one, holding Pierre Turgeon line scoreless, along with Derek King and Steve Thomas. Turgeon with a pair tonight, Thomas assisting on both. Ridley and Hogue to face it off. Outside the Capitals' blue line. Al Iafredi shoots into the outer zone. Healy stops it behind the net for Uwe Krupp. Well seconds of the power play. We're tied at two as Flatley moves into the capital zone. Put checked away by Ridley. And that will do it. Carpenter steps out of the box. And a two-line pass on the Islanders with exactly two minutes gone by. Here in this third period, Coach Terry Murray. So the Islanders start the third period at the cap center on the power play. Unable right now to take advantage of that. That score remains 2-2 in the third period of play. Our score in Pittsburgh in the third period. Still the Penguins six. The New Jersey Devils nothing. We'll be going back there in just a moment right after these commercial words. Back here in Pittsburgh, Gary Thorne and Bill Clement. And Billy Garen's got the puck. Garen working in. Pittsburgh with a 6 to nothing lead. Tom Barrasso shutting them down. He's made all 26 saves on the 26 devil shots in this game. John McKeck from the rookie. The two goals. Real strong game for Ron Francis on the assist side and is always on his defensive play. Mario Lemieux has added another here in this game. Hook checked away to center. Tippett had it, lost it. Lemieux took it away to Bobby Holy. Devils changing it up on the fly over to C-Mac. Alexander C-Mac coming three back for the pins. Shot by C-Mac, saved Barrasso. C-Mac set it for Lemieux. Barrasso blocked that with his stick. Zalapukin waiting. The shot penalty coming up. It's going to be on Pittsburgh once they gain control. C-Mac had it, lost it to Troy Loney, and there's the whistle of Dennis Morrell. And the Devils will get another power play chance on the tripping call. The tendency now for the Penguins would be to let up a little bit. They don't intentionally want to let up, but boy, it's hard not to when you've got a 6-0 lead, so instead of getting right tight to your check, you might reach out. 
Hey, Scotty, just relax, guys. Just relax. Just keep playing the way we play best. Well, Peter Taglianetti was acquired at the trading deadline, came back here to Pittsburgh. He had left Pittsburgh in the expansion draft and gone to Tampa Bay. Never sold his home, and his wife stayed here because she has a business. They're two kids. Peter moved right back into the house, and he told me that he could hardly contain his enthusiasm when Phil Esposito of the Tampa Bay Lightning called him, the general manager, and told him he'd be coming back to Pittsburgh. But he's going to get to cool his heels for a couple of minutes because of a hold on this one. Down goes Claude Lemieux. And out goes Peter Taglianetti. 424 at the time. There's Peter Stasny, the great veteran. All those outstanding seasons with the Quebec Nordiques, now with the New Jersey Devils. And as we said, the question of where he goes after this season. He only has a one-year contract here with the Devils. Pittsburgh, penalty killing. They clear it out. They have one shorthanded goal in this game. Mario Lemieux getting his sixth career playoff shorthanded goal. Scott Niedermeyer dropped it off. Stevens brought into the zone by Driver. Devils would have been offside. They cleared back out. Niedermeyer back in his own end. Devils have just not been able to make the power play work here in this series against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Claude Lemieux right back out. Driver will come back to get it. Good play by Alf Samuelson that time. Devils regrouping at center. Stasny up for Lemieux. Knocked away. Alf Samuelson after McEachern got the first piece. Cleared out of the zone by Murphy. Devils have not gotten in the zone here in this power play. Minute 15 left on it. Near side boards. No one there to get it. Ramsey length of the ice. Craig Billington now in net. Relieving Terraria who went through the first two periods of this game. Bruce Driver. Driver starting it up for New Jersey. Nichols comes out on the power play unit. Driver sends it in. Barrasso couldn't stop it. Shell Samuelson tied up Nichols. Stevens the puck back to the line. Tommy Avalon can't handle it. McEachern. McEachern's got a shot at a hat trick in a Stanley Cup playoff game here in this one for the rookie. Tommy Avalon again working from behind his own net. 36 left on the power play for the Devils. John McLean in the middle tied up by Ramsey as he tried to tip it in. Tom Barrasso up for Mullen. Mullen clears. Boy, Barrasso is just like a third defenseman back there. The Devils, if they're going to get anything done in the dump and chase, have to keep it away from Tom Barrasso, especially on their power play. Fourth best penalty killing unit. Pittsburgh had it during the regular season. Bernie Nichols, the shot deflected. Pittsburgh here in the third period will try and work on the shutout, of course, for Tom Barrasso. They'd love to pick that up for him, help him out getting it. McLean shot deflected, bounces to the bottom of the circle. Grant Jennings, penalty is over, even strength. Devils, five on five situation now, trying to hold the puck in. Again, Tommy Avalon gunned it in. Getting knocked down. Good hit put on by Taglianetti on McLean. Cmac in the middle, got tied up by Jeff Daniels. And Pittsburgh just clears it up to take the heat off. There'll be no icing here. Craig Billington at the other end leaves it for Tommy Avalon. Bernie Nichols to the red line to McLean. McLean moving in. McLean rubbed out of the play along the boards. Devils able to hold it in. Kasatonov shot it wide. Rebound Barrasso batted it in the air. McLean Nichols the turnaround. Centered. Kutisov shot blocked by Martin Straka. Behind that, Tangley and then he just wants a face off, but he's not going to get it. Zelopuk into Kasatonov. Rolled wide. Jennings came out to help Troy Loney. Loney coming. In the middle, Troy Loney. Loney drops it. Yarmir Yager. Yager, the wrist shot. Save filling to Troy Loney behind the net. Loney wants a wraparound. Leaves it for Yager. Yager setting up behind the net. Billington trying to find him, trying to jam it in. Covered up by Billington right on the goal line. Well, this is what I was talking about. The Penguins don't seem to drop off in the hunger department. They want more. Six? That ain't enough for them. Four in the second period. Chris Terreri taken out after all of that, and Craig Billington in that for the New Jersey Devils. Pittsburgh trying to add more after they got the six goals in the first game and had the six to three win. Yager drops it off for Martin Straka. Straka for Troy Loney. Loney tied up by Bobby Holy. Straka coming over to get it. C-Mac is there. Tipped it away off Straka. The piece off will go back to piece off. Around the boards for Kasatonov. Alexei Kasatonov reversing direction to Bobby Holy. In the middle, Billy Garrett. Tip pass and into the zone for Tisov. Barrasso back. Played by Bobby Holik behind the net. Back to get it. Samuelson. Samuelson up to the point. Not out. Held in. 
Slava Fatisov saved Barasso, kicked it out deep. Rebound shot Halik. That one's blocked off the board. Halik checked it down himself to Billy Garen. Garen tied up by Samuelson. Alt Samuelson got it up ice. Yager two on two. Martin Straka a little step. Kasatonov is able to move in. Like say Kasatonov, a very fast skater, but bothered this season by a bad knee that slowed him down a good deal. One of the reasons he has not played here in the first game of the playoffs and put back in tonight. Devils changing it up, get back on the ice. Stevens pass intercepted by Stasny. Stasny up, breaking was Tommy Abel, and his deflection ends up on the Pittsburgh bench. Ends up 6 0, Tom. All right, Gary, let's take a look at the aisles of the Caps tied at two. Benoit Hogue intercepts a Caps pass, breaks into the zone, lets go a bullet, and he beats Tabarat. The Islanders lead it 3 2 with about 13 minutes left to go in regulation time. At the Boston Garden, the Bruins can't win for losing. Can they? Big drive by Don Swinney. Great save by Grant Fuhrer, who's still pitching the shutout with 13 minutes left in that one. Back to Pittsburgh. Some surprises around in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs because it's best of seven, and we are only on the second game in all of those these series. The Islanders don't have to surprise me because they've finished pretty strong down the stretch. But man, oh man, Buffalo up 3-0 in Buffalo with 13 minutes to go. And that's an offside two-line pass. Face off the other way with 11.05 left to go here in the second. Sean McEachern has got some real jets on his feet. Boy, he gets going. Boy, does he ever. Not only does he have the big jets, Gary, but he finished second in their, their fastest shot competition before the All-Star game. Well, there are the Jets, but it's the engine that's inside that casing that really drives Sean McEachern. Believe it or not, the guy that's not really known for his shot on this team, Ulf Samuelson, finished with the top shot in that competition, 96.2. Sean McEachern was right behind him in the MPH department. McEachern came up in the playoffs last season, so he had no regular season experience. He ended up with playoff game experience last year. McEachern played in 19 playoff games. Ended up with a couple of goals and seven assists in those games. And, of course, got this entire season under his belt and is in regularly here for Pittsburgh. Tom Barrasso got tied up behind the net. Centering pass on Barrasso deflected top of the crease. McEachern will run it out of there. McEachern got nailed by Ken Danico, but saw it coming in time and turned sideways on it. Intended for Francis. Francis trying to chase it down. Danico banged it up. One of the things the Devils didn't do in game one have not been able to do here for the hat trick. McEachern saved by Billington is play a strong physical game. And I really think, Bill, one of the reasons is they're not fast enough to catch Pittsburgh to do them. Good point. Now, they were strong physically in the first period when they played as a unit, but as the score got out of hand, the Devils have let the Pittsburgh Penguins spread the play out. There's been more skating than hitting. You really don't have a chance to hit a team like Pittsburgh unless you slow them down. And you're right, the Devils can't back into the speed department. And offside are the Devils as Zelopukin had already moved into the zone. 10-14 left to go. Valeri Zelopukin, one of the Devils who had a great record in game one, has not been able to do here for the hat trick. McEachern saved by Billington. This play a strong physical game. And I really think, Bill, one of the reasons is they're not fast enough to catch Pittsburgh to do them. Good point. Now, they were strong physically in the first period when they played as a unit, but as the score got out of hand, the Devils have let the Pittsburgh Penguins spread the play out. There's been more skating than hitting. You really don't have a chance to hit a team like Pittsburgh unless you slow them down. And you're right, the Devils can't match it in the speed department. And offside are the Devils as Zelopukin had already moved into the zone. 10-14 left to go. Well, Larry Zelopukin, one of the Devils who had a great regular season, but he too has not had playoff experience for the Devils. And that is something they are lacking in in their forward positions. Romario. Just kicking this one in gear, getting the big goal, which was the second of the night, his third of the playoffs, a shorthanded goal. But put Pittsburgh up by a score of two to nothing. And that has been used sparingly, really, since halfway through the second period. Seamack brings it in. Blind pass, tipped up by Murphy to Stevens. Ahead to Lemieux, not quite. Scott Stevens at Reddit, taken away by Kevin Stevens again. Devils back, Niedermeyer. Antlis pursuit of the puck for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They just never give up on it. Ramsey drops it off. Six nothing Pittsburgh lead. Into the middle intended for Stevens. Thursday night, these two teams play in East Rutherford, New Jersey at the Meadowlands. 
And Bill and I will have it for you, ESPN's National Hockey Night, Thursday, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, the game three of this series. Samuelson gets it back on the tip pass from Tockett. Can't control, though. Lemieux didn't get it. Tom Barrasso comes out. Zalapukin had a step on everybody, forcing Barrasso to play it. He dies off the glass to Lemieux. Claude Lemieux moving in. Mario Lemieux, rather. Claude Lemieux in front. Tip the pass behind the net. Petisoff battling for that one. Claude Lemieux, Mario Lemieux in the corner. Petisoff gets the loose puck. Zalapukin trying to break. Shell Samuelson knocks it away. Comes back. Oh, both teams making a change here. Al Samuelson just waited. Al Samuelson sends it in. Billington goes behind the net to get it. 6-0 lead. Pittsburgh not playing a safe game, but certainly not doing anything to make a mistake. Yager to Tippett. Tippett drops it just behind to Troy Loney. Stefan Riche picks it up. Riche trying to drop it off. Tippett was there again. Again, Petisov. Bounced back out of the zone by Al Samuelson. Intended for Troy Loney on the pass. McLean gets it in. Nichols looking. Shot saved. Barrasso. Tom Barrasso kicks it away. He won't have any trouble keeping himself up here as he's got a chance at a shutout with 8.16 to go. Sure looks like everybody's playing for him, too. You get a 6-0 lead. You're a team that's as strong as the Penguins. You look for a secondary incentive, perhaps, in a time like this, just to keep going and to make sure that you play well, at least play well defensively, and that incentive is Tom Barrasso's shutout. They are doing that right now. Barrasso, and it dropped off behind the net, picked up there by Ramsey. During the regular season, Barrasso finished with four shutouts, four of the five that Pittsburgh had, including a couple of back-to-back -back jobs. Tippett at center couldn't get it. Bruce Driver waiting for his teammates to clear. Poked back to center by Ramsey. Driver again will play it at his own blue line. Bobby Holik circling with him. Driver headmans it in. Driver waiting. Garen cutting. Shot deflected off Garen. And a whistle in front of the net. Tom Barrasso was into it with Bobby Holik. And there'll be penalties on that. 7.29 to go. Barrasso after the shutout. 6 nothing right now. Let's see why. Islanders lead the Caps 3-2. Caps in the Islanders' zone. The drive from the point. The save is made, but here's Dmitry Kristic. Once, now twice, it's a goal, right? But play continues on. The goal light didn't go on. So they had to end up at the next stoppage of play, reviewing it, and as you can see, it definitely was a goal. They gave it to Kristic. The game is tied at three with 12.44 regulation time, Gary. That's great use, great use of it, so that you don't have a mistake happen right there. Perfect example. Matching minors here as Barrasso goes off on the roughing call. Bobby Holik for interference at 12.31. So the teams are four on four with 7.16 to go in the third period. Bruce Driver, Barrasso the save. Driver the rebound to Billy Guerin. Blocked before he could get it there by Shell Samuelson. Played around the net. Stefan Riche. Riche centering it. Shot. Hit Driver in front. Joey Mullen just dropped it off to Francis. Francis bringing it up. Decides to rag it back into his own end. Samuelson over to Peter Taglianetti. His pass, Francis. Mullen both there. Driver able to clear it back out. Billy Garen of the Devils. Garen over for Riche. Riche backing up. Stevens just coming off the bench. Brings it in. Francis just stepped right in and took it away. Shell Samuelson back. Pittsburgh will change up with the fly here. Samuelson for Mullen. Joey Mullen is on the wrong side of the line. That's an offside two-line pass. that kid, the rink rat from New York City. He's, he and the family grew up at Madison Square Garden where he used to sneak in while his dad worked there running the Zamboni and working at the garden and skated all those hours on the ice. And, yep, two of them in the National Hockey League. And, uh, gosh, they started on roller skates in a school playground. They had got a lot of their training there. There were long shots even to go to college. But they did that. And there were long shots to make it to the NHL. They did that. And once they got established, they weren't long shots to have long careers. They both have had long careers. Ryan and Joey Mullen. Devils trying to hold it in the offensive zone. Yager doing the digging. Can't get it away from Niedermeyer to Lemieux. Four on four. Lemieux shot. Save Barrasso. Rebound Barrasso. Made a save. Another save made on John McLean. Great play. Niedermeyer shot again. Deflected this time by Al Samuelson. Devils with a couple of chances right there. Three of them, really. Yager starts it up ice. Yager's got Murphy in the middle. Yarmir, Yager to Murphy. Murphy popped off the play by Zalapukin to Lemieux. Claude Lemieux of the Devils. Lemieux moving in. Al Samuelson. 
Lemieux centered, hit the back of the net, goes to the corner, Zella Pukin. Zella Pukin turned around by Murphy, picked up by Alf Samuelson, 17 left on the matching minors. Hook checked into the corner by Niedermeyer, jammed off the glass and out of the zone. 5.38 left to go in the third period. Niedermeyer, nice pass, but offside on the left was Claude Lemieux. Want to remind you that coming up next, you will see baseball right here at ESPN as the Cleveland Indians take on the red-hot California Angels. Jose Mesa makes the start for the Indians. Scott Sanderson on the mound for the Angels. Carlos Viego, that switch-hitting home run man, has set the record. One from each side in the same inning this year. J.T. Snow, one of the bright young stars of the Angels. A couple of home runs already. Steve Fiziok, Dave Campbell standing by for that one. That'll be coming up next, the Indians and the Angels. Now, Gary, it doesn't seem to matter what is happening in the game, what the score is. When you are nursing a shutout, there's a moment of truth near the end of the game. Tom Barrasso had to face at least three good scoring chances from the Devils. That one there was a partial screen. A follow-up chance by Nita Myers. Zella Pukin off to the side. Three in a row for Tom Barrasso. But it doesn't seem to matter how badly you're playing a team or what the score is. To preserve a shutout, there is always at least a big save or two or three that have to be made near the end. Let's see if there are going to be any more in this one with 5.18 left to go. And Tom Barrasso, after that shutout, he has two career shutouts in Stanley Cup playoff history. He got one in the 91 playoffs and one last year the 92 playoffs, going after a third tonight. Daniels ran it in. Batisov backs it up. Casatonov played it off the boards. Up for Randy McKay. McKay dumps it in. Herb Brooks again has rotated the forwards all over the place. In fact, has moved Tommy Apple into defense and up to play forward in part of tonight's game, trying to find a combination. Put something on the board. McKay and Martin Straka do battle. Straka came away with a puck to Mullen to Straka. Straka's got Daniels on the near side with him. Drops it to him. Daniels pass blocked by Peter Stasny. Played into the corner by Mullen. Picked up by Fatisov. And Fatisov turns it up ice. Back to five on five now. Those two incidental miners. Long over. Just run in along the board. Peter Taglianetti goes back to get it. Taglianetti. Up. Yager. Armir Yager sends it cross ice. McEachern couldn't handle it. That's something else tonight. Pittsburgh will try and get McEachern another so he can have a hat trick in the playoffs. Ken Danico ties him up. Yager's got it behind the net. Yager standing waiting. Yager comes to the front or tries to play by driver to ride him off. Back for Yager. Yager. McEachern's in front of the net. Yager tried to hit him with a pass, but Stasny blocked it. Taglianetti in. Tipped by McEachern wide. Tip it back. Craig Billington got it away. Craig Billington, his first playoff game for this 26-year-old out of London, Ontario. And an All-Star this season in Montreal for the All-Star game. Taglianetti in. 3.37 to go. Pittsburgh fans. Just a spontaneous cheer here for their team. And the Let's Go Pen lights up on the board. A number of them have already departed our midst from the sellout crowd here of 16,164. I think the big question they're asking themselves, Gary, is will it be the Devils here for the next game or will it be a new opponent? That's the only question in their mind. They know they'll be back here. If Pittsburgh's going right now, they may get another rest before they have to play. Nichols moving in. Nichols, Barrasso. He stayed with him at the outside of the net. Centering pass by McLean, gloved down. Cleared up, not up. Niedermeyer, his shot over the head of everybody. John McLean cutting. McLean hits the side of the net with his shot. Devils now are just trying to turn it on net no matter what the angle. Staple had dropped it off. Doesn't seem like Mike Staple, a two-on-one. Troy Loney in the middle. Martin Straka dropped the shot. Samuelson, he missed it wide. Straka. To the point, Larry Murphy shot blocked. Murphy coming back to get it. Good play, Scott Stevens went down and blocked that shot. Six nothing, third period. Two and a half minutes to go, and Scott Stevens put his body in front of the Larry Murphy shot. That's why he's wearing the C. Niedermeyer in. Riche, save Barrasso. Quick rebound, Francis. Francis coming two on one. Mullen with the puck. Mullen, the shot, scores! Sharp shooter for Herb Brooks, guys to deal with. 
Joey Mullen had the passing option taken away from him here because Richie made a good effort to come back and negate Ronnie Francis in the play. See, Mullen looks, looks. Now he knows he can pass. He's got to shoot. Boy, did he rip this one past Craig Billington off the post as well. So he cut it fine and flew it by Billington. 7-zip. His 99th career playoff point, 7-0 Pittsburgh Tombies. All right, Gary, with that game well in hand, has been for some time. We're here to bring you the best game of the night when it is possible. Let's go directly live down to the Cap Center, Landover, Maryland. It's getting late third period. Islanders and Caps tied at three with under six and a half to go. Let's go in that game in progress. We welcome those of you joining us once again on ESPN as icing is called on the Islanders. A hard hit by Travis Green on Al Iafredi. We're tied at three with six minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the third period from the Capitol Center. Kenny Albert along with Craig Lachlan and Al Koken. It was two apiece. After two, a pair of goals by Pierre Turgeon for the Islanders. Dale Hunter for the Capitals. And hey, you mentioned Dale Hunter. Look at this pass to Randy Burge, who's only had three or four shifts. He had a great chance to get the Capitals the lead four to three, but he's denied Glenn Healy, who's had a strong performance in the, in the cage for the Islanders, comes up with a big one here in the third period. This game has been a great hockey game. If you were here watching on TV, you fall in love with the game. And look at this. It's got a little bit of everything. Look at this hit. Big Travis Green nailing Eli Afrady as he comes back to touch up the puck for an icing call. Typical Islanders Capitals game. Hard fought in the trenches. Just something you just want to sit back and look and walk. Just a great hockey game. Well, here in the third, Benoit Ho gave the Isles a 3-2 lead at 3:31, unassisted off the giveaway. And then Dimitri Kristic tied it. They went to the video replay at 7-16. Three apiece. Kurjan's line against Ridley's. Caps win the draw. Hatcher moving in, and that's deflected out by Kurjan. Kevin Hatcher with the blast from the right point. Now 6.15 to go. Capitals one game one by the score of 3-1. 3-3 tonight, game three at the Nassau Coliseum on Thursday. The Capitals are really having their fair share of face-off. They're winning the draw and getting quality scoring chances. There it's a nice pick play with Kevin Hatcher allowed to tee it up. But Turgeon, the man who lost it for the Islanders, he makes a defensive play by deflecting that up over the glass. Therefore, the face-off where the deflection took place. Here's Hatcher again, moving in. Puck in the far corner. Crook changes with Kelly Miller. Asperitis for the Islanders. This is Turgeon coming in one on two. Down the right wing. Here Turgeon holds up. Then he has it poke checked away by Johansson. Johansson kicks at it. And the Capitals clear to center with under six minutes to go here in the third. Group watched by Ridley. That rolls all the way down into the capital zone. And it's cleared out by Tabarachi. Tyson waved off. It went through the crease. So play continues as Dennis Vasky hits Derek King at center, moving into the capital zone. King still with it on the right wing, and a glove save is made by Tabarachi. Rick Tabarachi, that stop number 34. As Dale Hunter and Steve Thomas continue to jostle in front of the Capitals net. And 38 goal scorer Derek King handling the hot potato gets a nice pass. Gets a pretty good shot away on Tabarachi. Tabarachi coming up with a nice save for the Capitals. He's a busy man in the crease. Not only makes the save, he does a lot of skating after he makes it. Islanders coach Al Arbor. He did a terrific job this year with the young defense. Islanders finishing in third place in the Patrick Division with 87 points. Using three rookies on D most of the season. Dale Hunter steps in again. Benoit Ho. Face off to the left of Tabarachi. And it's won by the Islanders. Pilon shot and it goes wide. Sails around the boards to Norton. One of the Islanders flatly was taken down in front of the net as play comes the other way. Pilon goes cross ice to Benoit Ho. The lead pass flatly and it stopped the rebound score. Ray Ferraro had a 
tremendous series during the regular season. He scored the only goal for the Islanders in the first game Sunday night, playoff game number one. Here he's given the Islanders a 4-3 lead with 5-10 left, but give a lot of credit to Patrick Flatley. Here's Hogue to Flatley on the reverse angle, the hard slap shot, save made by Tabarachi. Look at how that rebound just crawls up Ferraro's stick, then falls over top of the goaltender. Here's one more look at it. The nice feed from Hogue, creating the two-on-one, the hard slap shot, and watch as Ferraro comes in, just gets a piece of it and puts it past the goaltender. Ray Ferraro, his second of the series, ninth career playoff goal from Patrick Flatley, and Benoit Hogue at 14.50. So it's now the Islanders four, and the Capitals three as Cavallini shoots in. Faced down by Malikov. Comes to Cote on the right point. That shot was blocked. Dale Hunter beats Flatley to it. Then Flatley takes a hard hit from Burridge. And now the Islanders clear. They come ahead two on two. Vasky waits for teammates to join and then shoots in with 4.43 to go. Here in the third period, Islanders have gone up by one. Terry Murray going with Randy Burridge on the Dale Hunter line with Pat Ellenut. Randy Burridge, a veteran of playoff action, has scored a lot of big goals. He's just coming back from that injury, but he's looking for something special to happen for number 18. Randy Burridge went to the finals twice with Boston Bruins. Here's Mullen streaking down the left wing, but a two-line pass is called. So Ray Ferraro's goal, his ninth playoff goal in his career, has given the Islanders a 4-3 to three lead. We're going to take care of some business here, but we'll be right back to the Caps Center for the conclusion of this game in a moment. On. Let's check the scoreboard. Montreal, Quebec, an empty net goal has given Quebec a 4-1 to lead with just 37 seconds left. Uh, Buffalo has scored again. They lead Boston by a count of 4 to nothing with two minutes left in that one. The Penguins have won. That's a final at 7-0. Now let's go back to the cap center. 4-3, Islanders on top. Roof over skates, hit by Miller, who sends it out to the right point to Kevin Hatcher. Capitals work it around, then it's cleared. Johansson just beating Thomas to it, but then Thomas catches up and puts in. Hatcher has some skating room. Kevin Hatcher for the Capitals. Across the island of Blue Line. He shoots one. It's kicked out by Healy. King wraps it around the boards and down. 335 to play. That's moved by Miller along the board. Miller cuts around Vasky. Miller behind the net. Looking in front and a shot just wide by Johansson. And now the puck's clear. Ally Afraidy at his own blue line. Delgarno to Travis Green. But Mullen was ahead of the play. Offsides on the Islanders. Rookie Travis Green with 3.12 to go in this 4-3 hockey game. Travis Green very similar to the Capitals' Mike Ridley. As a junior, this kid scored a lot of goals. Scored 60 goals one season out in the Western League Medicine Hat. Now he's more of a checker. He played in the minors. Now he's been made into a checker. And here's a reverse angle that Dimitri Kristic chance. Good checking in front by Delgarno, but Kristic still gets a piece of the lumber on it. As Cote also coming in to help out the Capitals crashing the net. Kristic, who had that beauty out of a backhander into the top corner of the net for his second of the playoffs so far. He's the type of guy now, you're, he's going to see a lot of ice time. On that opportunity, Kristic, despite being tied up, still getting the stick on it like he did in game one when he scored. One hand on the stick, able to steer it in. Three minutes to play, third period from the Capitol Center. It's the Islanders four and the Capitals three. Here comes Kristic to Cote. Cote was hit by a high stick. Penalty upcoming on the Islanders. The late call, Tabarachi heads off. Now the touch is made by Mullen. And the Capitals will go to the power play. Cote caught by a high stick. And it's a five-minute major. It looks like Dvorsky pointed to the locker room. Let's see. It looks like Paul Dvorsky is pointing over. And now he's going to go take a look at Cote. And he just takes one look. And he says, yes, you're gone. Rich Pilon, one of their tough guys who they rely on to kill penalties. He's off to the dressing room. The Caps are going to have a five-minute major, and here we're going to pick it up. Keelan 
trying to stand it up, and there's the stick in the face. Good call by the referee, Dvorsky, sending off Pilon. The Capitals now have five minutes to work with. What an opportunity for the Washington Capitals. With two minutes, 50 seconds to go in this third period, the Capitals with a major power play. They can score as many times as they can, and the power play will not end. And one thing the Capitals have to be to watch out for here is not to take a penalty of their own. Obviously, they need one goal within the next 250 to tie it. 4-3 Islanders. Pilon, five for high, sticking at a game misconduct at 17-10. What a time for a major penalty to be called. Yeah, but they've got the execution going fine on the power play. Now they've got to make it work. They're probably working in one-minute time frames. They want to get a good opportunity in the first minute, get out the next unit for the next minute, and then 50 seconds probably pull the goalie looking for the tie. The nice thing about this, you play the full five minutes. If it ends up and that they score, they can then score before this period is over or if this game goes to overtime. Capitals must be patient, not try to rush things. Dale Hunter centering Dimitri Christian and Michael Pomarka. Capitals on the power play for the remainder of regulation. Should they not take a penalty of their own? Elon five for high sticking, plus a game misconduct at 17-10. The other quartet huddling in the corner. A lot of pressure on the youngsters on defense. Malakoff, he's an experienced guy, how, however, even though it's his first playoff. But the Capitals, I think, will try to work on Baskey, who's the younger guy out there on the D. Johansson's shot was blocked to the Islanders clear. Blocked by Fitzgerald. 2.35 to go in this third period. Gally Johansson ahead to Christich on the right wing. Out to the point, Hatcher couldn't keep in. Capitals have to regroup at center. Remember, the power play will continue for the remainder of regulation. Kavanka down the right wing. 2.15 to go in this period. Kavanka right circle. Up top, Johansson. Back to Kavanka. Johansson straight away. Michael Kavanka. Kavanka shoots, stops. The rebound comes to Fitzgerald of the Islanders with two minutes to go. And he sends down. Hatcher back for the capital. Under two minutes to play, third period. Islanders lead the Caps 4-3. Capitals on the power play. Iafrady shoots in. Around the boards to Ridley. Bonder in the far corner. Christic comes together with Flatley. And the Islanders clear once again. Craig, would you pull Tabaraki here to get six on four, or would you leave it as is? Well, I'd wait until there's probably a minute or left left in this period but right now the capitals being beaten to the puck they need to flood the zone get three or four guys on the defense to get the loose puck right now the islanders are winning all the loose pucks the capitals still on this power play here come the capitals a minute 15 to play now enough to drop to bondra now cote keeps in bondra along the board left point i am brady on it goes wide a minute five to go in the third period capitals trail by one I afraid he puts towards the net, it's blocked, it's loose, and Fitzgerald is on it, not able to clear. Kept in by the capital. Ridley racing for it with Kasparitis. Tabarachi now heading towards the bench, shadow whistle. A whistle in the corner. Puck frozen with 50 seconds to play. It looked like the Capitals were going to pull Rick Tabarachi. Well, I think they are now. They've got exactly what they wanted to get. You're not going to get a goal. You've got to get a face-off. And there's Tabarachi getting a little bit of a breather there. But the puck was froze next to the left of Glenn Healy. So we're going to have a face-off. And it's going to be a great face-off. Should be a lot of action left. Still 50 seconds left in this hockey game in this third period. The Capitals need this. All right, so the Islanders with the precarious lead, that major penalty. What do you make of the Caps penalty, uh, power play so far? Well, the power play has to get the puck to the net. What happened? They dumped the puck in, and they had guys going in against the Islanders, but you have to take the Islander out of the play. They were poking and trying to fish the puck out. The Islanders came up the boards. They were able to ice it three times. Someone's got to pay a physical price. Price, run into one of the Islanders. The second guy in will get the loose puck, set it back. 
You've got big shooters on the point with I Frady mm -hmm. and Hatcher. Let them rifle away. Al, could Tabarat should be coming out of the net now? Yeah, this is what's really interesting to me, Jim. I know you've been in the coaching position there. When you pull that goal, are you going to give him the empty net to shoot at? If you give him that empty net, it's a big risk. But, you know, everything on the line here and your power play being so good with I Frady and good shoot, what do you do in this situation? Well, you're right. Shorthanded situations, it kind of plays into the penalty killer's hands. They can get the puck down the ice and they won't be called for icing. So when that goal is open, it looks big once the puck is on the Islander stick. So you know they'll be looking. They won't be just icing it. They'll be trying to score that shorthanded goal. So the Islanders are shorthanded. Maybe they'll be too shorthanded if the goalie is pulled out of the Capitals net. Let's see what happens in the waning seconds of regulation time at the Cap Center in Lanaway, Maryland. Islanders lead at 4-3, to three, but Washington remains on that major power play. Welcome once again to those of you watching on ESPN. It's the Islanders for the Capitals 3, 50 seconds remaining in the third period, and a major penalty call for high sticking on Rich Pilon. The Capitals with the power play, they pulled the goalie and have a six on four skating advantage. Remember, the Islanders can ice the puck, send the puck down without being called for icing since they're playing shorthanded. Now they're just deciding the lineup. Got Baskey's not sure if he should go on the boards or not. And right now, Coach Al Arbor says, yes, go on the boards. If he doesn't go on the boards, it makes it a, for an easy draw for Dale Hunter. He can just punch it over to Pavonka. That's why Baskey's right next to number 20 for the Capitals. Hunter and Hove. Hunter wins the draw to Johansson. Capitals with two extra skaters. Michael Pavonka. Pavonka to the near corner. 43 seconds to go. Johansson, the return pass to Pavonka. In deep, Hunter. Looking in front, it's loose in the slot and cleared by the Islanders. 32 seconds to play. Kevin Hatcher risks the puck in. Stopped by Healing. Alakov on it for the Islanders. And he sends into the crowd. Face off in the Islander zone with 26 seconds to go. And Kenny, I think the Capitals are going to get a bad break here. The faceoff is coming outside. The referee and the linesman saying that that puck deflected off the Capitals. Dimitri Kristich. Here's Dale Hunter with a great chance. There's the play across the crease. It doesn't go the Capitals' way. Way Healy chips it out in the front. And there's that high lofting backhand just getting over the outstretched Kevin Hatcher. You're going to see the captain, I'm sure, out there. He's been in this situation before, Patrick Flatley. Capitals with a six on four, skating advantage. They trail 4-3, 26 seconds to go, and the Caps are on the power play. Dimitri Christich will take the face off with Patrick Flatley. Capitals line at five across, Hatcher behind. Off the face off. Hatcher at the red line. Johansson shoots in. Down to 20 seconds. You can see the clock. King fires up the board. Kept in by Johansson. And now it lands in the stands with 14.5 seconds remaining. Go ahead goal scored by Ray Ferraro with five minutes, 10 seconds to play in this third period. After Christich tied it at 7.16. Just 14 and a half seconds remaining. Not much time left for the Washington Capitals here in game two of the Patrick Division semifinal. Hunter will take the draw with Flatley. It's controlled by the cap. Johansson carries along the boards. Now it goes to the far corner. Eight seconds left behind the net. Now it comes in front. The shot!
We're going to overtime. So Dale Hunter's third goal of the night, fifth of the playoffs, ties it up. Due to contractual obligations, we will not be able to go back live for the overtime. I know a lot of you are going, why can't you? Believe me, there are reasons why we can't. We have uh, Major League Baseball coming up, and due to our contractual obligations, we can't go back to their live. But Gary Miller will be standing by on the baseball set, and as soon as the game-winning goal is scored, yeah, we'll uh, roll it in for you. We'll, we'll give you an update on that game just as soon as possible. The rest of the games are all final tonight. We go over the scoreboard, and we will see that, uh, what are we going to begin with? New Jersey and Pittsburgh, our primary telecast. The Penguins win it easily. Their 13th playoff win in a row. That's a new National Hockey League record. They lead the series two games to none. Elsewhere tonight, Buffalo wins again in Boston. They shut out the Bruins 4-zip. The Sabres up two games to none, going home to Buffalo for the next two. Game three Thursday night at the Odd. Montreal and Quebec. Quebec wins it 4-1. to one. They win games one and two at home. They'll be at the form of Montreal Thursday night for game three. So you have three teams leading their series, two games to none. One team may be up to none or maybe tied, depending the overtime outcome. What's your thought tonight? Well, tonight, I'd just like to talk about Dale Hunter. He's a guy that a lot of players love to hate. He's a very tenacious, tough guy to play against. But year after year, he's one of the best big game performers in the National Hockey League. And he's done it again tonight, and they're happy watching him because of the performance of Dale Hunter. So how do the Penguins not get him on their roster? <laughs> the big game on Thursday, I think, is going to be in Buffalo. I believe the Sabres, if they can win that game, are going to get rid of that hex. But if they lose, they're going to start feeling mm -hmm. this. So I think that series is settled Thursday in Buffalo. Right now, Al, Al Arbor, the Islanders, is thinking one thing. Rich Pilon, keep your stick down. Dummy to the end. And that's, uh, I tell you, not only the Caps tie it up, they're still on that major power play headed for overtime. Gary Miller, during our baseball game, will keep you updated on the hockey game. As soon as there's an outcome and a final, you'll have the highlight and the final score during our Major League Baseball. Don't forget, National Hockey Night comes back at you Thursday night from the uh, Burn Meadowlands Arena, 7.30 Eastern Time, Game 3, the Penguins and Devils. Can the Devils muster enough to at least win one game in this series? We will find out, and of course, we'll keep you up to date on all the games, other games going on that night during National Hockey Night. Right now, for Jim Schoenfeld, for Al Morganti, I'm Tom Mees. Major League Baseball coming up next, the Cleveland Indians and the California Angels standing by to join that game in progress. Gary Miller will bring you the outcome of the Washington Islander hockey game as soon as it's finished. Hope you enjoyed the action tonight. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you Thursday.